Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the what is we what are we on the August nineteenth live show? Uh, I've got a guest here. You guys know who this is? <laughs> so if if you uh, couldn't already guess, this is this is Rico. He um, he's a, a fellow YouTuber. The tank that you see in the background, that's uh, that's his thing. I've already done a couple videos on it recently, so you get to see it a little bit more once again on this show. So hopefully uh, you guys are all pretty familiar with him and his tank. If you have any questions about it, he's right here. We're, <laughs> we're going to be hanging out for the next, I don't know, two and a half, three hours. So um, I'll pull this up occasionally, just so you can kind of just see the chat to see right. if there's anybody, um, anybody you care to address in person. So uh, thanks you guys for joining us. Um, we're we're going to get started. Well, we are a little early, granted. It's uh, it's 1.53, we, and the official start time is 2 p.m., and we can, in the meantime, kind of go over some of how a live show works. So what you see on the screen right now uh, is a, a rough overview here. Now, uh, Arthur, who is in chat, had some issues logging in this morning. Um, we tried to replicate the, the, the problem and we kind of sort of did and then in trying to fix it we kind of dropped a bomb on our website <laughs> so hopefully we didn't break even more of it than, uh, than we originally intended to. So if you guys are having any issues uh, with that we're probably going to be working on it a little bit more after the show um, but the a possible solution might be to check out as a guest if you're not able to log in or something. And again, um, it, it it worked for me when I when I tried to log in. So uh, if you guys already have accounts and stuff like that, you might want to just test it to see if you guys can get in. If not, let me know. Um, okay, so real quick here, Jim Kyle, are we allowed to ask Coral advice questions? Sure. We might not answer them all, but you can certainly <laughs> ask. It, it wouldn't hurt. Okay, so anyway, if you uh, do want to participate in the live sale portion of this program, uh, what you can do is you can go to titlegardens.com, assuming it works, go to the live sale page. There's like a blinking red dot, and you can, uh, you can see all the numbered corals that we've got going on there. And you just put it into your shopping cart and check out like normal. Um, so in order to get the coral, you do have to complete the checkout process. It's not... Uh, sufficient just to have it in your shopping cart and then two hours later uh, you know hit checkout it that's not gonna work out so if you have to place multiple orders that's fine just make sure to select local pickup slash live sale so you're not charged like 10 shipping modules worth of shipping and any orders over 250 ship for free um, that pretty much covers it I think and we'll, we'll go over this uh, later on in the show once again um, for the folks that might be new to this that weren't here at the very beginning. Um, let's see. So. Did I skip any? Oh yeah, wait, hold on, hold on. I did skip some stuff. I have to say my shout out to the patrons on Patreon. So thanks you guys. Uh, this is like the, the definitive list here of so thank you, Phil, Mark, Robert, Steve, Ryan, Dave, Nate, Nancy, Jeff, Samuel, who's new, Matthew Robinson, who's new, and Mark Andrews, who's new. So thank you guys so much. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about Patreon, it's kind of like a donation site for um, YouTube creators. Um, any and all funding towards this helps out a lot. This is kind of a bit of a production, so trust me, it, it helps. So really appreciate uh, the donations there. So patreon.com slash title gardens. You can kind of figure that, figure out some of the stuff there. There's some perks to it as well. There's some, some tiers and uh, some tier related perks. So again, thanks you guys. All right. So anyway, let's hop right into this live show thingy.
No sound. Why did we lose sound? Working on sound? Yeah, no audio. Because on our end, it shows that it's... Yeah, working. No sound. Okay, because I totally see sound, right? Yes. Okay. That's why I'm confused, because it's totally working. Okay, on. you're back. It's okay. back. Why is it back? I, I have no idea. Okay. Nobody changed anything. All right. We did nothing to fix that. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> we did absolutely nothing to fix that problem. This is like, this day is so weird. We need to, okay. So what, 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 what number are we on, Ben? Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. just okay. said no sound again. Okay, hold on. But let's get, let's get the other mic over here. Plug him into to number three. Okay, never mind. It says sounds good. Okay, hold on. He said sounds good, so hold on. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> YouTube, you are killing me, YouTube. You make six billion dollars and you can't make my sound work? Killing me here. Okay, so that's number two, by the way, the Summer Fat Zoas. Number three. Okay. You're killing me, YouTube. All right. Do you see any, um, any, any uh, if you, if you uh, see any, uh, what do you call it, questions? Yes. I'm like all flabbergasted. I can't handle this. Hello, hon. See my wife in okay. here. It said, it said lower your volume. No, it's, it, the volume's fine. I'm just freaking out. That's all. Ah. And, and then somebody else says it's too quiet. Go figure. I'm, I'm really confused. Yeah, me too. When it comes to the sound. Yeah, I think we're good on sound. I like, think so. I'm, I'm seeing like I'm seeing our levels. Hey, if, if there's a problem with sound, trust me, it is on YouTube's end, because I'm looking at my audio meters, and we are so good right now. Okay, number four. Okay. So, hello from Brazil. Hi, how's it going? And uh, somebody was asking earlier about international shipping. No, we do not ship outside of the U.S. My only question is, in your opinion, would phosphates or a bluer lighting temp cause Greening out of SPS. I have a bunch of SPS acros turning green. Well, you seem to have a lot more SPS than I do. So, what do you think? Do you think phosphate's gonna have an issue, have a, an effect on that? I think it might be something more than just phosphates, but um, I've never experienced that, so I really do not know how to answer that one. I, yeah, of the things that would affect acro coloration. Number five. Um, certainly, water chemistry does play a part, mm -hmm. but m much more likely culprit would be lighting, and specifically lighting intensity and spectrum both. Um, it could be any number of other chemical parameters, and just chemical instability could cause it, yeah. but going directly to phosphate no, would not no. be high on my list of Me potential neither. things. Me neither. Sounds good again. Go figure. We didn't change anything, Maxwell. Nothing. <laughs> Number six. Oh, Rico sounds kind of nervous. How cute. It's probably because uh, there's like nervous breakdown level technical issues going on. The entire time that he was waiting here, we we're just hanging out. Yeah. And the whole world is like catching on fire around us. And we're like, Pretty much. This, this is very n not normal. Very not normal. Yeah, I kind of walked into like World War II around here. Things not working quite as expected. And the thing is, you would think that that would be somehow different than usual. It's it's always <laughs> something, and it's it's never something that we can oh, oh we we know how to fix this issue. Like sure, then a completely unrelated one just happens to pop up, and like what's going on now? So uh, yeah, international shipping of live animals wouldn't be the smartest move, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
Uh, there, there's huge regulatory issues. There's huge cost issues associated with that. So, I mean, unless people are spending well into the five figures, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do international, unfortunately. Um, and that's on that's on both ends. Like just sending like one or two zoas, that's not going to be a thing. So I always get you guys confused. There's Rico's Reef Tank, and then there's Rico's Reef. Great. Yeah. Not the same person, apparently. Not the same person. Um, what number are we going today? We are going to 239-ish. Ooh. A lot of eye candy. So uh, when you see the, the color change on the image on the on the coral there that's been uh hitting it with an led flashlight we're we're using t5 lights still so if you, in case you guys are still wondering how the those inexpensive t5 fixtures from amazon are working out they're working out great uh, but when he shines like the led flashlight on it it kind of helps a little bit uh, to show off fluorescence it's going to look a lot more fluorescent um, if you were just to have an all led tank obviously but um, this is kind of how we just, just display it to get the most, I guess, neutral coloration for, for showing purposes. Yeah, so uh, G, G. Flinsky is like, I was confused too, two Ricos. I guess you'll have that every now and then, small world. <laughs> You know, this person, your Salt Empire Corals, keeps wanting me to send corals to Canada, and I'm like, it's not happening. <laughs> it's just not a thing. So Yvonne asks, um, Rico, if you decide to go for a bigger build, would you use the same methods, or would you try something different, like ultra-low nutrient systems? Um, <clears throat> difference would be probably not any different than what I've been doing, because obviously my way of things work uh, for me. Um, I probably would uh, definitely do a lot of dry rock versus live rock, but I would still implement some live rock just to get, just to see the tank, let's just say. But um, um, everything that you guys see or know about my system, th that goes to any system that I ever set up. That's just my way of doing it, and it works for me. Quote number is this, Ben? 11. 11. Okay. So Rico's Reef is in Dayton. So that, that's where the, both of the Rico's Reefs are, are in Ohio. He's in Dayton? Yeah, he's in Dayton. We're obviously in Akron. And we're in Ohio, right? Yeah. All the Rico's Reefs are in Ohio. Number 12. Is it normal for my Watchman Gobi to be pale white every time I turn the lights back on? It turns back to yellow after 30 minutes. I think that's pretty normal. What do you think? I would say, yeah, even... All fish are kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, they kind of do that. Fox faces are notorious for... Color change. change color change. So, yeah. Sean Crewell, fan. I have a short tentacle fungia plate, and it's been closed for two weeks. All my levels are good. Um, I'm in the process of changing new T5 bulbs. It sounds like the fix. <sighs> I would, if all your parameters are good, I would probably say, long as it's not skin coming off, I'd leave it alone and just let it, whatever's going on. Yeah, sometimes they can get temperamental. Yeah, and and sometimes they that that ends up with them dying back. So mm -hmm. there, it could be an issue, but it's I can't. It's like really hit or miss. You know, it's hard to kind of put your finger on like why it even happens to begin with. Exactly.
<laughs> Rosy. <laughs> My plate was closed for a couple weeks. Flameback Angel was picking on it when I wasn't looking. What do you think about having like uh, the dwarf angels in your reef? Because uh, you know you you have like a few. Okay. Um, when you have a lot of corals, and let's just say you have dwarf angels in it, um, and they decide to pick, they have such a variety. You're not even gonna. It's it's. They're not going to be picking on the same coral first off if they're going to be picking um but all angels are not the same every fish is not the same um you get some that are very nice and you only leave things and then you got some that are complete jerks uh so i i probably wouldn't do it in a smaller system with less coral but when you have a lot of coral you know it's it's probably really not going to hurt anything. None of my corals have ever suffered from any angels being in there. I don't trust angels <laughs> at all. So usually when people say, I have blank corals not opening up, is it my blah, blah, blah problem? And I'm like, okay, well, first off, what fish do you have? Blah, blah, blah. I have a flame angel. That's your problem. Like 100%. Yeah. And it's fo usually followed up by... It's usually followed up by, I've never seen him pick. It can't be the flame angel. It's I, the flame angel. Yeah. It's have, the coral beauty. I've actually had a flame angel that used to be in that system. And he's no longer in the system because I, he would just pick, like, no tomorrow. Yeah. And replace it with a coral beauty. And the coral beauty doesn't do anything. So it's a hit and miss. <laughs> and I think you're at the point now where you have so much that even if the coral beauty was doing damage, like, who cares? Exactly. I mean, you could probably have like a majestic in your tank. You could probably have like an emperor angel. It's probably not going to be a big deal. The, the, and that's what I'm saying. If you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, when you have a big system and you have it fully packed with coral, you, there's there are things you can get around versus um, to some other people that can't get around with smaller systems. But you're you're right. Yeah. But no, I because like because of the business that I'm in of trying to grow corals, <laughs> the last thing I need is for a fish to, to derail that process. Because I mean, some things, some corals are so expensive to acquire. I mean, I think that like a lot of folks who you know want to get like a wholesale account just to get like you know those quote unquote cheap corals. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you, what you want is like good coral, and unfortunately. Uh, what that means is, yeah, you, you can't you can't touch the corals then. <laughs> Whoops, can't touch the coral. Um, yeah, so like the the thing about like getting coral uh, from like a wholesale place, they'll never sell you their good stuff. It's not like oh, I'm, I'm gonna walk into this place with two hundred dollars in cash and you walk out with all the great stuff. So first yeah. off, two hundred dollars isn't gonna get you anything near their best stuff. And number two, they would never sell it to you in the first place until you spend you have, 10 grand first. At least. And yeah. you have to be that kind of customer that is hitting, let's say, a quota every month, spending X amount of dollars right. and build up that reputation in and, the first And month. then so you finally do do that. And then you put all these corals into your tank that you were lucky enough to purchase in the first place. And, and then you, your fish eats it. And you got an angel. <laughs> it's like, that's not going to happen. No, 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 no. Yeah. It, it, it was, it's too hard. It's too hard to get to this point. Yeah, snot dog, because like definitely grin flame angels, they definitely pick. Yep. Uh, Jer Jeroro Mouse. What do you guys think about maintaining a geocalcium reactor and a GHL doser? So you have a geocalcium reactor. I have, I have a much older set of geo reactors. Um, well, I, mean, I guess what do you do for maintenance on it? Um, there's nothing I really have to do for maintenance um, besides, you know, top it off. Um, it is good to probably, you know, once or twice a year um, break it all down and do the same thing you do with anything else, you know, give it a good cleaning and clean the pump, and clean the pump you know, yeah. and put it all back together and put it on. Uh, it's really not a lot of maintenance when it comes to those things, but uh, 
unless direct sunlight is hitting it or something, you know, something crazy like that. But I really like your uh, your electronic regulator control. Like that that's like the biggest issue with me and um, and calcium reactors is a, a bubble counter. Uh, or not the bubble counter, but the needle needle, the needle valve. valve. Yeah. Uh, you can set it initially just perfect, but then it over yeah. time it loses calibration, and then so if it's putting in too many bubbles, your whole thing turns into a milkshake and gets clogged. If you put in too little, then you're just running water through a calcium. It reactor. has a lot to do with the actual CO2 tank as it starts to deplete. The pressure's not quite mm -hmm. the same. Yeah. So with the electronic one, it, it doesn't matter. It just somehow is able to really, it, it's precise to like know tomorrow. It's really precise and it does a very good job. I heard that the way that it works, it's like it, it has like a blade in it that kind of like cuts. cuts yeah, it actually it, cuts the air stream. the bubbles perfect as mm -hmm. well as a needle, the needle valve does it. Mm -hmm. So you might get a bubble that's bigger than a smaller in it. So. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very strongly, because our calcium reactors are in some state of not working at all. And it's because we have these old regulators that are ancient. They're probably 10 years old now. Mm -hmm. And they're all due for a replacement. And so I'm actually thinking of replacing them all with this. If I could tell unit. you to do anything, I definitely would, regardless of the cost, it will pay for itself. Yeah. Seriously. The, but the, my biggest worry isn't so much the cost. It's that in, in a greenhouse system, electronics get chewed up it, it does but you you might be actually be surprised on how it stands up to even a greenhouse yeah um, you know it, I think it's definitely worth a try I mean if I'm gonna be spending money on it at all I mean I, I would I'd still be in it for like a hundred and something for a regular one so is it like good for double the cost probably right yeah well look at it this way too um, say you get it and you get five years before the greenhouse takes a toll. So what did it cost you to have a $300 piece of equipment mm -hmm. over the course of five years? Right. So you kind of got to look at things that, that way, not the initial expense, but how long did you have it? Mm -hmm. You know, like with these LEDs, okay, the highest ones are what, 800 bucks? But if you yeah. get 10 years out of it, what did you pay yeah. over the course every day to have those lights? That's probably a good lesson. Do you have one of these, by the way, this pink Gani for us? No, I, pretty slick. I have no guns. Okay, so do most people, this is uh, Donovan Dell asking, do most people pop the frag off of the plug? Um, mm -hmm. Not really. I mean, some people do, but I think it's actually counterproductive to do so because the plug will help you place it. And then mm -hmm. the coral will, the, the plugs are only one inch uh, in diameter, and so it'll take a coral no time at all to completely cover the plug and then start growing onto the rock. Um, whereas I think that the people that, that kind of spend time getting it off the rock, or I'm sorry, off the plug, it's kind of a chore to get it onto a rock after that. Like yes, it's, it hard to, it's, it's hard to get stuff to stick down. So if anything, if you really, really, really wanted to, to not see the plug, I would cement it, the plug itself down onto rock rather than trying to get the coral off and then reattached. Uh, Nick, Nate, Nathu. Thir I'm 13. I swear I've been keeping salt water for years. Uh, just restarted a 10 gallon. What Zoas do you recommend? Personal what, preference. Yeah. yeah what, what, what do you Zoas like? Do you like? <laughs> yeah, because uh, th that's the thing about about Zoas. Uh, some people they just like certain ones that I would never put in my tank just because it, it's not my thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you right now. Of all the Zoas that we keep, the two most popular selling ones. Radioactive dragon eyes mm -hmm. and eagle eyes. Yeah. Like more than any other thing. Yeah. And they're just like, they're just cheap. And they're not even that cheap. I mean, we, they're like, we charge the same for them as just about any other Zoa. That's not super rare. So that's just their preference. So um, Rico's Reef asks Hey, Rico, what do you think about Ocean Revive LEDs? Um, there are only LEDs I've ever ran. Um, after coming off of metal halides. Um, I have a friend that's a farmer, coral farmer, um, and I went and paid him a visit to 
pick some of my own corals. Not and me. No. I'm not that friend. Not this guy. Um, <clears throat> so um, I actually noticed these lights over his, you know, you know, uh, his grow out tanks. And, and when we're talking, a lot of his corals are high end um, stuff. And uh, I asked him, I said, what do you think? He said, dude, you're not going to go wrong. So that was in our conversation. I came home and put them on. And my corals, my tank never bat an eye or did anything funky. It took to the lights right off the back. Um, at that time, I ran 65% full spectrum and 100% blues. Over the time, though, I have dropped the full spectrums down to 35 uh, full spectrum and 100% blues. And as you guys see, Thanks for Than to actually capture my tank uh, with his beautiful camera. Um, you guys see the results. Yeah, I love them. I can't say nothing bad. I think um, I've proven that you don't need the best of the best. Uh, you don't need the Bentley of lights. Um, and you can do just fine with the Chinese black boxes, Ocean Revives. So, thank you. I use uh, $100 T5s. So, there's that. There you go. There you go. And by the way, all these corals you're looking at are under those lights he's talking about, and they look wonderful. They do okay. They do okay. I can't complain too much. I think they look fine. <laughs> <laughs> They're okay. Um, shoot, what was I thinking? There's something else. Uh, somebody was asking uh, about his SPS turning brown. Like, if, if your SPS suddenly started turning brown, what would be, like, your mental checklist of things that you would look at to try to fix that? Um, I don't really have one anymore because it's usually, if they do that, it's because I, I, I fragged them and moved them, and they got mad because uh, the nutrients level in my tank never goes anywhere. But if, if you know, for anybody new, I definitely would definitely check the nutrients level uh, for me. Um, if your corals were doing fine and all of a sudden started browning out, um, Check your nutrients. I don't know what you would do, but that's what I would do. I, I definitely would check my nitrates and phosphates and uh, my parameters. You know, yeah. making sure. I think it's always. And, yeah, I think you know. it's always a good good idea to like start with just the absolute fundamentals, which is like exactly. Are you are you seeing the problem? Like, like what what are you able to detect? It's mm -hmm. like so if you go through this stuff about okay, salinity maybe it's maybe it's high or low. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Or like uh, suddenly I have nitrate. Why do I have nitrate? Well, then then you can go from there. But if everything comes back fine, now I start looking at stuff that doesn't show up on a test kit, which would be like, you know, is there something wrong with my lighting? Was there something wrong with my lights? Like they were stuck on all day, because sometimes like with with uh, with the automation, mm -hmm. uh, it it's not a hundred percent. Sometimes like you know ghosts get into the system and suddenly I've had that happen. Yeah, your lights just kick on at night. Been on all night long, so they got a double dose of light. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That'll kill stuff real fast. Okay, so greening the earth. Can I put a skimmer that's rated for one hundred and twenty liters on my fifteen liter nano? Yeah, I think so. Would you, like over, basically the question of oversized skimming. So if your tank is like 100 gallons, let's say, mm -hmm. and then uh, you put your reef octopus that's rated for... Okay, so, so skimmer ratings don't mean anything. Okay? It doesn't mean anything. No, but let, let's, let's say that the skimmer is half the size of the aquarium. That's how big it is. Half the size of the aquarium. Yeah, it's huge, giant. And the question is basically, do they believe that you can overskim, or would it even work? I mean, does 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 it does that even skim? It does work, um, but you're, you're talking about so many variables. You know, yeah. what's your what's your what's your stock? You mm -hmm. know, I mean, how, what's your buy low basically? I guess what, it would it, be possible that, if there was like not enough protein in the water. But it just it sits there and just it, does nothing. It's, it just sits it, on the bubbles. It know? just sits on the bubbles. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that I personally. Um, I'm a firm believer in, in going plus two, plus three, whatever, whatever you want. But definitely um, more because a lot of people have the tendency to overdo anything that they do to their system. Yeah. I mean, whether it's feeding or adding amino acids or whatever the case may be. So in a way, it's like a, a backup, like a fail safe from your mistakes. Um, and if there's nothing in there, then there's nothing in there. But guess what? Your 
your bio load is still a bio load and it's still going to always produce some kind of form of waste you know your fish are just not going to go to the bathroom that day it doesn't work that way yeah so and if you're asking me it's like i'm one of the most extra dudes you'll ever meet so if you're <laughs> if you go over capacity on something that's fine it just costs yes. money and space exactly at the end of the day i mean yeah it's good it's good so hello from dubai hello hi sabella so fella hello you see some familiar faces i'm sure yes yeah, sabella so fella is the biggest big big fan he says <laughs> um paul from the uk hello so somebody is wondering how do you get rid of hermetic snails if you see if you see them take them out mainly to remove them because because there's nothing you can put into the I mean, tank a, a, a short of do rasses take care of hermetics? I I, I, I I doubt it. Yeah, I to doubt be it. honest, but I don't know what's really going to. The parrotfish. Yeah, parrotfish. That that'll that would, do it. That, yeah, that definitely would do that'll it. That'll turn everything in your tank into sand. It, it sure will. You would have no corals, probably no rock, no nothing left. You'll have yeah. a, a tank full You'll of sand. sand. <laughs> and no vermetic snails until they're on the glass. Then you're gonna have exactly. Them. Yeah, you I think you have to. Uh, manually remove them um so this is kind of interesting okay so would you recommend having a skimmer at all on a nano like a 20 gallon okay so if i was to set up a nano or a pico tank first off i'd probably have all coral and maybe like something like a pistol shrimp and a goby mm -hmm. like i i wouldn't and you let those be pretty much the the feed source to feed the corals and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. no, I'd, I'd probably wouldn't have a skimmer on something like that because I would know better as far as bio load. Um, I think keeping, the, when it comes to fish and stuff like that, very low in the system uh, to a point where whatever you're feeding them in return is feeding the corals and everybody's happy. You're not overloading the system. There's not going to be a, a big buildup of nutrients or anything like that. And the other thing is, like, so, so Rico doesn't do uh, water changes on his tank. Exactly. But doing a water change on a 20 gallon tank is ridiculously easy. And it, if you just right. did that and regularly, it's yeah, and, it, and it's it's cheap. So you could you could just do ginormous water changes, a whole five gallons a week, and like percentage wise. It's going to be an enormous water change all the time that is it's costing you pennies and it'll take 10 minutes so yeah you probably don't need a skimmer but it, I, I probably would put one on there yeah you don't need it but also you you asked me and i would never have probably never have a 20 gallon tank unless it was for uh people wanted to see me actually keep a 20 gallon tank full of sbs just yeah. just to show that it can be done um but yeah, that's we're, really we're not my into, thing yeah we're, we're into bigger tanks yeah that's really not my thing so there's there's so, so many limitations with, with the small small aquarium um al is this with the 4k camera uh no it's not so uh, this kind of goes back to my original problem with my internet it's i'm only able to upload a certain amount uh so like my, the maximum we can really stably upload is at 720p which is like well which is probably what you're looking at now um which i'm sure is like doing wonders for our wrinkles right now because there's not enough <laughs> pixels to show how old we are but um i would like to be able to broadcast in 4k he's and older than me i i'm older <laughs> yeah see clearly this is all cgi right <laughs> so yeah, I would love to be able to broadcast in 4K. Um, and I think I, I will be able to, but to do a live show like this, I would have to shoot the corals a day in advance. Um, and so, you know, let me know if that's a problem for you guys. I just might do it one day and just see if you even notice. But um, it's basically, I would shoot it a day in advance, go over to my friend's place that has fiber, and then we'll just do a broadcast from there, and it'll be four times this resolution. So there's that. Death Mage. Okay. 
Sorry, Maxwell. <laughs> you done got yourself banned. <laughs> I don't know why people do that. We were, we were doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for, for a long time, like maybe, maybe it's just my ignorance of the whole thing. But like we hadn't banned people in a while. I mean, there's a while where we're averaging like five bands a day or something. It's great. And like, we didn't ever talk about it. But like, mm -hmm. I look forward to it. Like, I love banning people because I mean, like, talking about coral is fun and all. But I do that all the time. Like my enjoyment, I love banning trolls. You know what? I always, I mean, depending on what it is, but I, I mean, like, I'm I, I consider myself like a hard person, but. When I do it, I feel guilty. You do? Yeah. I know you probably don't. <laughs> you don't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, guilt isn't, guilt isn't my thing. And whenever I have people that are actually uh, like actively moderating, mm -hmm. I just say, if you have any question whatsoever, you ban. Like no warnings. Yeah. Just all of a sudden, just like, you know, kill shot. Like instantly. <laughs> kill shot. <laughs> And you thought, you thought I was bad. <laughs> Roscoe's Reef, how's it going, bud? Asian don't raisin. <sighs> okay. Uh, DJ Loins, no booze in today? No. I asked if he wanted a beer for this show, but uh, he's like, no, he's going he's gonna to have some iced tea or something. And I'm like, okay. I decided to ride the motorcycle over. It's a nice out, so yeah. Not used to Rico wearing a shirt and collar. Uh, yeah, I I would be in my tank top, but I know how Than kind of runs it, so just out of respect to him, I, I did put a button up and actually, you know, Put some cologne on. There you go. <laughs> good, good with the cologne game. Uh, so, so what are, you, what are you wearing as far as cologne goes? I don't. I, I forget the name. Actually, my wife bought it, and I put it on, and she was like, didn't want me to actually leave the house after I put it on to come here. Oh, really? She's like, you're not going anywhere. Aww. <laughs> That's uh, actually her right there, Jamie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because she's in the chat. So she, she can let us know what you're wearing. Yeah, yeah, she can tell you what it is. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so so Heather's like, bye Felicia Maxwell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, you got, we have savages in chat, I'll tell you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jartar, one, two, two, three, any micro musa today? Yes, there will be. Uh, what kind of bike are you riding? Um, V Star thirteen hundred. Basically, it looks like a Harley, uh, but it's a Yamaha. No DC. I'm not wearing brute. <laughs> he he's got Dracar Noir. Dracar Noir. Prada. Okay. Prada Lom. Uh, it's I don't know like she got me this kit uh -huh. and it had like I don't know 10 or so different samples so like I got a bunch of different samples which is good but uh and basically whatever you like then you just tell them that sample and then you go get your big bottle okay. from the mall so. is it called Scentbird? is that the subscription service I have no idea okay. she did it I'm, if it's up to me I, I wouldn't have any clothes or anything because I just don't buy it so my wife yeah she does it all for me. <laughs> I, I lately fell down the, the the men's fragrance little you know rabbit hole yeah. I, I saw some guy on the internet and he was like so passionate about like men's fragrances with this German dude and all, and all of a sudden <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm at the mall <laughs> smelling <laughs> strips yeah. Uh, yes OG Swiss Room. Hey, how's it going, bud? Glad to see you. Johan, Roscoe's Reef. If anybody I miss, I apologize. Hello to anybody that's always on my live stream. Jamie, you know it's Old Spice. It's like Prada. 
if anything, it'd probably be like Hero or uh, Cool Water for our age back. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what that used to. Wear. So you know what? I okay. Here, here's what's funny. I used to wear Cool Water back in high school. There right? you go. Now what's funny is I wear like a like a, an expensive col- like cologne called uh, Creed uh, Green Irish Tweed. I never saw it, it. I never it's, saw that. One. It's Creed is like a, a pricey boutique like men's fragrance company, right? Mm-hmm. And green Irish tweed, a lot of people say, smells like cool water. It's like, they smell different, but they're, they are they got a lot of the same kind of soul going on there. Right. So it's funny how like, yeah, come full circle. Okay, DC Reef, I'm building a school tank. Uh, would you install an auto feeder or show one of the teachers how much to feed? Yeah. By the way, did you get the legs that I sent you for the light? I haven't heard anything from you about you receiving those. I mailed them directly to the school. That's nice of you. I don't give anything away. I had them there, and it's for kids. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's, t- it's totally not true. I, I've totally donated stuff to, to, to schools. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know why I said that. He said it, I did. <laughs> But you know, as far as like train, uh, training a teacher to feed or an auto I, feeder, I, I, you know what? If it well, depending on I, auto feeder, but uh, I, I do like the Ehein auto feeder. I think it's um, v- very good. Long as you know nobody's going to be messing with it or trying to change how much food comes out of it. Um, I personally would probably just put on an auto feeder just because you know teachers got enough to worry about when it comes to the kids. And probably would forget, so I would take take my chances with the auto feeder. I think or, I think both have potential for disaster. They, they do, but so I, do you I, trust the machines? Like I, the you know what uh, machine I, overlords? Before I you know got hurt and been stuck at home, my auto feeder worked great. So, and I, I do I do hear that like the was it the the Tunzi one? That's pretty good. Uh, I don't know about that one. I know there was the Apex one. Um, okay. that, Wait, which did you say that, that worked? The Eheim. Eheim. I knew Eheim it was like German is, one. Okay, yeah, the German one. Yeah, that's the only one I trust. Even though I run Apex, I wouldn't buy theirs. I, I bought the Eheim just because I've already seen so much. So design. Psychedelic Babe is like, look at Rico with his shirt on. Aww. <laughs> hey, P-Babe. <laughs> and Roscoe's Reef of Scott's a new fragrance from Than called Elegance from Title Gardens. <laughs> Hey. Elegance. There you go. No, it has to be like, le, like, l'elegance. <laughs> l'elegance. <laughs> Hi, Thana Rico. How's business going? Pretty good. It was almost flatline zero earlier this morning when Pretty our much. website died. But it looks like it looks like people are, are managing. So thank you guys very much for hanging with us. Uh, what's the chance of a damaged cor- uh, torch coral surviving? I sort of cracked it a bit, the fleshy part, uh, while gluing it to a frag plug today. Um, if it happened in my tank, it would die. If it's, um, I, I would definitely probably give it an iodine dip just in case so for any infection. Uh, just try to keep it from getting brown jelly. Um, which is, it, it's really a hit and miss, to be honest. But I, I would definitely probably give it a, a iodine dip and then uh, let it go and see what happens. I, it, it, that's a hard one. I, I don't Torches know that, die without yeah, any assistance it, from exactly. me. Exactly. Well, I mean, I've, I've, you know, I actually got a couple of euphilia that just did this the other day after you left. That's just, me. Like, and I'm like, and well, 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 what's going on? No, what I think it is, well, I think my Hollywood stunners, those big ones, actually played a little war game and the euphilia got hit. But, um, like, it wrapped up three heads, like, on one of my um, frog spawn and uh, hit my uh, gold torch, like, it's through. And that was three heads there. So that's like 300 bucks, you know, 100 bucks a head, whatever. Yeah. It <laughs> so it's gone. So, yeah. They're, they're, they, for whatever reason, I think, it, and I, I think it's more towards like the Australian mm-hmm. euphilia. Mm-hmm. They tend to be like they like to die for no reason, sort of, sort of camp. 
Whereas yeah. Indonesian ones, maybe they, they die at the same rate, but they grow back so much faster that you don't really notice They're it as tougher, much. They're tougher, I feel like, in, in, in so many ways, but maybe that's just me maybe i'm I'm imagining but i feel like i think they're tougher yeah i i really do i think they're a tougher coral fan please do more coral feeding time lapse videos with your new camera i would like to i like to do more video in general this this entire month has been so busy yeah you have no idea like every single weekend something is going on i noticed uh somebody said uh yeah beach uh one two five four uh he came over for the cc uh, cookout last weekend. This weekend, obviously, we're doing a live show. Mm -hmm. Next weekend is going to be Macna. Weekend after that, I think I'm going to be in South Dakota for something. Uh, uh, like, weekend after that, I think I'll be in Chicago for the show there. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it, I, I don't think they know, realize how busy you actually are when it comes to this. Pretty busy. Period. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, like, I do other companies as well. Like Tidal Gardens is the one I spend the, by far the most time with. But there's other companies. There's like other obligations. So like I would love to be able to play with my with my camera more. I think that all of my time on the camera put together, uh, half of it was at your house. I, I believe it. <laughs> Does, are we drinking tonight? No, reefer do. Well, you could drink. You could drink. I, I only have water here though. <laughs> this is so weird. Rico's voice is all different and crisp here. <laughs> um, probably because I'm using a mic. Mics help. Mics Definitely. are a big deal. And, and I suppose I'm just glad that it's all working. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I thought we were going to have to reschedule for real, guys. Or just do a hangout. <laughs> the, like weird stuff happens all the time for, for no reason. Like, so like, at the very beginning of the show, uh, we had like an audio issue or at least or everyone's trolling me and everybody just says, you know, mm -hmm. Mike's not working, right? And then we kind of just like look at it, look at this, look at this other thing and then it starts working again. Like we did nothing and it kind of fixes itself. Yes, inappropriate reefer. I do clean up nicely. I, I am out my comfort zone. And Than I'm always looks good, of course. It's, it's CGI, guys. I've been in a tux once, and I was to get married. <laughs> Actually, all this is CGI. We just put in, like, an Instagram filter. <laughs> there you go. Called Dapper. <laughs> <laughs> it puts clothes. It dresses us and everything. It's great. Yeah. So, Tim, hey... Hey, Jamie, Than, and Rico. Hello. Hey, Tim. You know, I never really even checked how many people are on. Uh, so peak concurrent is 166. That's pretty good. I'll take 166. I know you would. I would, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some people are like, you know what I saw the other day? This is like, this is like so crazy, but there was this, just this, you know, long 24-hour long like video with like really calming music of, a, of an aquarium. Uh -huh. And there's like 800 people watching this thing. I'm like that's what that's what I should do. I should just set up a. Some People actually told me to do that. Hey, Rico, put put do a live stream. Just put your your, your you know your tank in there and play some you know some, some music. Yeah. So go go to bed music. Yeah. And then get all the that delicious YouTube monies. Yeah. Right. <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> it's like I I should do that. Yeah. Oh. So we have Inappropriate Reefer joining us. So Inappropriate Reefer, are you heading to, to Macna? Because if you are, you definitely need, need to track, track me down and yeah. say hello. I'm only going to be there Saturday, so you have, to, you have to work quick. But definitely come by. And, and that, actually, that goes for any of you folks. I will, we will, we'll, we'll both be at Macna. He's going to be there the entire event for the most yes, part. Yes. I'm only going to be there Saturday. I'll be leaving Saturday, I don't know like eight o'clock, maybe my flight, I think it is. Aquarium activist, how you doing? Glad to see you in here. This kid, aquarium activist, if he stays at what he's doing, uh -huh. he'll be 
like George, coral fish, 12G, most definitely. Oh. Very bright kid. Very bright kid. Should I ban him? No, do not ban him. <laughs> it's like, oh, you like, you like him? Yes, I like him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knife your favorite person in chat. So. <laughs> I'm not talking no more now, guys. <laughs> I don't know. This, this day is so weird. Can I name these acros? No, not all of them. Some of them are different. Some of them are no namers. And if they are having a name, Dan knows them. because I he's... don't know them. <laughs> That's why they're assorted. This one could be like red something. Uh, yeah. It's red planetish almost, kind of. Strawberry like shortcake. Like a shortcake or okay. something, yeah. Uh, so aquarium activist, inappropriate reefer, no magna for them. Now they're banned. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. Tim said he'll take one for the team. <laughs> See you, Tim. You know. All right, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do no, it to you, Tim. Tim's a nice guy. <laughs> call, call it a red Rico. Hey, there you go. <laughs> See, the thing is, they, they asked me to um, name a coral, and I'm like, well, to name it, I have to house it and have a mother colony so I can keep that, that species going. Yeah. There's no really sense of me, you know, naming something, and I, you know, I sell anything and everything that I can sell. Well, you know what's funny? It's like, there's, there, so of all the, the places that name coral, you have like cherry corals, you have like worldwide corals, corals aqua yeah. SD, mm -hmm. corn. There, there's, so there, there's like, there, there's probably like Jason five, Fox. Jason Fox, right? There's like yeah. probably like, you know, five to 10 people that do like most of the naming mm -hmm. in the industry. Well, the only thing that really irks me is when all five or, or six or seven of them have the same coral that they name something different. Yep. Because, because I would rather have somebody else name everything. Like, to be perfectly honest, you, you don't see any Tidal Gardens branded anything, right? Mm -mm. It gets, what you see just, is what you get, yeah, you we, know. We, well, and, but in, if, if there Unless are consistently names, exactly. it, it's great. Exactly, like, I love that. Like Green Slime or Possil Pores or something. Right, or like, like or, Radioactive Dragon Eye. Yeah, or, or, yeah when it comes to the Zoas or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, Red Dragon. Uh, sure. Yeah. So, like, all that stuff, great. Mm -hmm. um, but be consistent. Like, exactly. Because it's cause confusing. So, it, it's confusing, and it's like now we don't know what it is. which one to go with. That's that's the frustrating. The part. same coral. Well, somebody might be selling for fifty, but that same one over here is like a hundred bucks. But what what what's like? I don't understand. You know, as far as the pricing, you know. Or yeah, pricing. Well, for us, like a lot, of, a lot of times, like we will be either higher or lower on a particular price point for a coral, mm -hmm. and it is one hundred percent due to how many of them are sitting in our aquarium. Like, if there, if we only have three of something, I don't care how cheap it is somewhere else. I'm not selling my three. Right, my last three for whatever. Yeah, yeah I get it. It's yeah. like I'd rather just have it sit in my tank and be overpriced until it's not. Three units and yeah, and now have ten now, or twenty units, yeah, now and then I'll be drop bucks the, right or whatever. Some people were asking about uh, Micromusa lords before. Here you go. There's a little little string of them that we're gonna go here. Please name something psychedelic broccoli <laughs> from the Washington Post. I, I'm missing that reference. Did something happen in the news? I I you know what I have no idea. But it, or psychedelic broccoli. I'd go Google that right now, but I'm afraid of what might show up. I don't. I don't trust. Yeah, I have no idea. Got nothing. Mm -mm. How's it going, Reef Spy? Yeah, everybody's like commenting. Look, what do you wear usually on your live show? I just wear a tank top <laughs> in my in, in my hat. That's it. I, all day, every day. I, I hate clothes. <laughs> I'm like the exact opposite. I'm like I'm like getting everything like custom custom tailored right no, now. No, I, I I feel like I could spend my money elsewhere. It's it's just clothes. Like I don't know. If we walk around naked, I'd just be that person because it's the way you come in anyway. So whatever. TG pink bikinis. Um, I don't get that. I don't know. I think that we have zoanthids called pink bikinis, but I think they're just pink bikinis. 
like from Zoanthid ID, Zoa ID. Mm -hmm. Oh, Washington posted an article on palytoxin. Gotcha. Okay. 62. And they mentioned reef in New York and how the corals look like psychedelic broccolis. Figures. Look like psychedelic broccoli. Okay. Tank top Chevy hat. Is that you? That, yes. Yep. That's me. Scaring everyone. That's going to keep people out of the hobby. I don't know if growing the hobby is necessarily a great thing. Sometimes I think that the people currently in the hobby could be doing a lot better. I think, yeah, I, I think I'll have to agree with that statement. So just like growing the, so, okay, uh, Ben actually told me this little, this little story. So I guess uh, in China, um, a very popular movie franchise is Harry Potter. Okay. And so what is becoming a popular choice for pets is owls. And I guess they're killing all the owls in China because owls are not easy to take care of. Owls make bad pets, really bad pets, and they take a lot of care. Mm -hmm. And so these people are getting owls as pets because they like Harry Potter, and all these owls are get going extinct over there or something. Okay. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the, 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 these hobbies are, are, are hard sometimes. The, yeah, like they reef are. aquariums are hard. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if like, you know, I, I would want this to be like a disposable, like goldfish disposable. That's not, that's not good. No. I hear that a Melanaris rasp prefers a sand bed to sleep in. Do you keep yours in bare bottom tanks? Um, yes. However, even in the bare bottom tanks that we have, we put a little tub of substrate for them to, to do that in. That's kind of like a, like a happy uh, medium ground if you're gonna go bare bottom is to have a little Tupperware uh, to just, just for the, the, the rasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go, narcosis corals. So pretty much the same thing. Wait, what number are we on? 65. Okay, cool. I, I, for some reason I thought I heard 66. I'm like, what? That's what happens as we get older. But I start hearing things. You start hearing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it's like when everybody wanted Dory. Well, when everybody wanted Nemo, I was like, okay, they're just they're just clownfish. And somebody asked earlier, I'm sorry, I sorry, I missed the the question from way back when. It's like, why do you why do you not like uh, clownfish? It's because you're jerks. Um, but yeah, Dory. <laughs> That's not a good starter fish. Not a not a great one. They get big people. Do you have do you have a, a blue hippo tank? Do I remember seeing one in your tank? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I you know what? Now that you mentioned fish, just for everybody that's listening, my, the yellow tang that I have that's really oh, messed yeah. up is a rescue fish. It was a fish that uh, somebody's other fish, I forget exactly what it was, was beating the heck out of it. And he asked me to take it, so I took it. And I don't have the heart to get rid of that fish. It's still a fish, okay? The fins might be messed up, but she's there to do a job. She does an excellent job. So she will have a, a, a lovely life, let's just say, for her the rest of her existence, so. Yeah, I mean, we didn't talk about it, but I, I kind of assumed something like that was the case because yeah. we sometimes take in like the occasional rescue fish too, and then it'll have like some like head and lateral line erosion starting, uh -huh. and it's and like she had that too. Yeah, you know, there's scars from it, but yeah, yeah, they, they they come scarred like that, and so when people then come in here, it's like your fish are malnourished, uh, malnourished. It's like yeah, well, they were they, here; they're doing pretty well, right? But they they, they were they came in like with, with all these other ailments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because everybody's like, ugh, those tangs look rough. Like, Well, it's just the one. She's the only one that's in there that's, Well, the you know, powder brown has some stuff going on. Well, the powder brown just recently did that because him and the purple tang, for some reason, decided to want to fight each other. Uh, the purple tang is very, very funny. Well, no, it's like a game to him. 
he antagonizes the powder brown until the powder brown really goes after him and he rams himself into the rock work. That's how that happened. And then they're, they're buddies again. Huh. And this goes on every so often. And then they're buddies again. Like frenemies. So, yeah, it's crazy. So, Rossi's Reef, what's the lowest temperature that a blue hippo tank can be happy? Is 72 too low? Mm, I don't know. Uh, uh, 72 is low. It's low, but I, I don't know if it's, I, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't try. I mean, 75 is kind of where I, I'll, I'll probably stop at yeah. personally. <laughs> like 75 is great. Yeah. Uh, DC Reefer says you didn't get, get your stuff. Didn't receive the LED legs yet. Address you gave you was my work address. I'm still looking out oh, for it. Okay, yeah, it should it should be there. So they told me Thursday that it would be there. So I don't know. Um, I saw a question earlier about uh, the the pink skeleton disease. Um, I have seen that quite a lot. A lot of um, a lot of Australian, in particular. Uh, sometimes they'll start dying back, and the skeleton where they die back is like bright pink. Have you ever seen that? I, I'm I'm so, I'm sorry, I missed oh, it. Um, like Acan colonies and certain LPS, they when they die back, they have like this pink stain on yes, the skeleton. Yeah, like a dye. I don't, I don't yeah. even know what that is. To be yeah. honestly, to be honest with you, I have no idea what that is or why. Yeah, it's like some weird bacterial thing. I think kind of specific to that. Rika, what's your favorite beer? Uh, if I'm gonna have a beer, um, I'd probably go with a you know, like a Bud Light Lime, um, but I'm not really a beer drinker. I'm more of a Crown Royal drinker, um, liquor. <laughs> I prefer you know a Roman Coke or you know something like that. Washington Apple. I know most people are gonna be like, why would you use something like Top Shelf Crown Royal um, as a you know to make a Washington Apple? But that's more of my drink. And I can drink a lot of it at one time. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> uh, yeah. One year younger than you. <laughs> like, I can't drink a lot anymore because, well, I, I probably never could drink a, a lot, lot. No, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I've never had such a great time drinking that it made the hangover worth it. And that was when I was younger even. Now when you're older. <sighs> That's the thing. And you wake up and you're like, why did I do this? It's like three days of recovery, guys. Tons of water. Literally. <laughs> Just to rehydrate. Somebody, somebody's giving you some grief about Bud Light Lime. I'm sorry. I said, I'm, if I'm going to, it's going to be that. I like it. Um, and, and the bear actually has to be really, really cold. If it's not, I and it gets warm on me, it just hits my gag reflexes. So, like I said, I'm not really a beer drinker. I'm more of a liquor drinker, so. Uh, That's like calling that? Corona beer. It isn't, I kind of like Corona. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've had a Corona too. I mean, I don't, whatever. Have you heard of fried Oreos? Yes, I have. I actually had them. They're pretty good. Is, it, is that a drink or is that like literally fried No, that's fried a fried Oreo. Literally. Oh. It's good. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of fried Twinkies. Hey, Billy Pipes in the house. DC Reefer. Uh, who else? JCS. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you in here. It's looking all snazzy. It's, it's, that, it's that Instagram filter. <laughs> you guys make me look really bad as if I'm, I'm running around like my house naked or something nothing wrong with uh, corona it's not the best beer in the world but it, it's like it's like this iconic summertime can't really mess it up too bad beer my wife is getting into these like orchards or whatever like the you know like uh the orchard like the, or, uh, like the I, I don't know like ciders? these ciders flavored beer mm. type stuff I, i'm just not a beer drinker to be honest i sometimes go to like beer fests with uh with some friends up in michigan uh -huh. and that's fun but it's literally like three four times a year 
And, and this last one, which was like the, the, obviously the summer beer fest, uh-huh. I think I like dumped out more beer than I drank because <laughs> it was hot that day. And I'm like, this oh, could yeah. go sideways Real quick. really bad <laughs> and I need to drive home tomorrow. So I want to play yeah. it real safe. <laughs> right. It's like if I don't love it, I'm not going to, I'm not drinking the rest of this. Fiji Rambo Zoa. So Daniel, so message deleted by Google moderator team. What happened there? I have no idea. Because I don't see any moderators on your... No. Um, now I'm that's curious a good question. What he said. Yeah, me too. Can we, like... And you can't... Because usually if something gets... Maybe he did it? I, I have no idea. He got caught by the Google cops. <laughs> what did he say? Because I, I... You know, we, we're going to have to, like, rewatch the stream... At about like uh, what what time point are we? About, about a little after an hour. <laughs> Did you see what the heck he even said to get caught by Google? Right. I've never seen that before. I, me neither. That's a first. All right. See you later, Rossi's Reef. All right, Rossi. Lucky gets to go to a, gets to go to the beach. Uh, DC Reefer, will you be filming at Macna? I'll be live. I'm not gonna be live. I'm yeah, you will. I will I'll, I'll come you over. You're gonna run over. Yeah, I'll run over. And uh, <laughs> you see that it's really, I'm just wearing a mask. <laughs> I don't even look like this. It's like a paper mask. Yeah, it's because I only have to be 2D online. Well, I definitely will be live long as oh. we'll have. This guy was, he was just talking about Corona and he got banned, he got, he got it deleted. Oh, uh, that's funny. How? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe they're getting paid. So if by I typed them? in the beer know. brand, they will block it. What? Yeah. Wait, I, Google moderators won't let you use brand names. I, it, I, wow. How is that? Because brand names, like I'm sure we've all talked about some brand name item or typed it in. I've never seen that happen. To yeah, Dan even read it out. It's like that's interesting. So okay, interesting. Somebody said, you know, it's like, okay, Coors Light, like Tim's Tank, right? Right. Yeah. 79. Dude, Tim, Google cops are going to be knocking on your door. <laughs> uh, I guess when you see the men in black, you know what you did wrong. I don't, I don't know. And, and, and everybody is like trying to like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, Loke is crazy. That's A-L, but that's Loke. Uh, yeah, he's crazy. They do. Don't be messing with Google. Uh, let's see if they delete my comments. They might delete you. <laughs> it's like you're not real if Google says you're not real. All right. <laughs> I've never seen that though. That's actually pretty shocking, surprising. Uh, okay, uh, Christian Reef, are you going to Reef of Palooza in October seventh and eighth, California? I. He's not. I have an invitation to go. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it because kids, schools, wife's still going back when the kids go back to school to finish her degree. Um, I don't think so. I, I, unless something changed and I'm able to have somebody able to pick up the kids and whatever, um, I don't know. I'm still on the fence on that one. My travel schedule, um, so... For a little while, um, so the guy operating the camera, I usually do these introductions better, but, uh, but Ben is on the camera. He's like my full-time staff guy. And since he's come back, it's, it's been a lot smoother here. It, do, it doesn't feel like it today, but trust me, it's been a lot smoother. Um, and I've been able to do more travel. So before, like I went, I went two solid years without doing any real significant travel. Uh, but since he's been back, I've been able to go out more. And my travel schedule filled up so aggressively. So, like I said, um, New Orleans is coming up. After mm. New Orleans, it's South Dakota, visiting some friends and family. And then um, we're looking at Japan. And then what's crazy is I had to turn down a trip to go to Cancun because I'd be landing the same day 
that my group is leaving. <laughs> so, and then I was like, well, I could leave the next day, but I didn't want to because then I'd be taking like two straight weeks off of work and I can't really do that. I mean, my cats wouldn't recognize me when I got home and stuff. <laughs> It'd be bad. So I, I, unfortunately, like I'm missing out on Cancun and to like to somehow squeeze like more locations, you know, like who knows where, California, New York, whatever. Yeah. It ain't happening. Can we have a greenhouse tour again too? Um, Killian uh, MC, MCL, MCI. Um, yeah, we could do one again. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while since I did like a full walkthrough. One of these days. I mean, so be, because like I see it every day, it, it seems like there's like really nothing that new, but there are differences. There's always little things that are different. Well, just the lights alone is a major difference. Yeah, and we did hang, hang then, a new light like a day or two ago. <laughs> there so, you go. There's always something. Uh, is it true that Live Aquaria ships fish to Petco, or does Petco have a partnership with them? Uh, Petco owns Live Aquaria. Don't when they? That, yeah, that's the rumor I've been hearing. I have no idea. Wait a minute. I need somebody to answer that, too, for me as well. They own Dr. Foster's and Smith, which I think owns Live Aquaria. Like, Petco purchased them. I heard, yeah, Petco bought them out is what I'm hearing. Yeah. I, I, am I 100% sure? I have no idea. No, but there, there's definitely some connection there, I believe. Now, Petco also has relationships with um, smaller companies that do, like, aquaculture and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but they're just interested in, like, the, you know, the, the corals for, like, the cheapest imaginable price. And they just want to be able to sell, like, $15 corals. So they'll pay you, like, two fifty or something. Right. I don't know. But... Um, they'll, but they'll buy like a thousand a month, so that adds up. That adds up, yeah. That adds up real, real good. And so I know one one place that you know used to do like the whole coral frag swap scene, travel, 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 travel. Mm -hmm. I think that person got like a little Petco deal, and they're like, slammed the doors shut, <laughs> took, took took their <laughs> website down, took everything down, and uh, they only do Petco because it was like I have this one customer. They buy double what the entire country was buying from me. We're doing this pet coat thing now, in the dark, you know, of a of of my own little yeah. warehouse sort of thing. So they, I mean, pet coat like obviously a big company. Love them, hate them, whatever. They, I'm sure they have their tentacles into a little bit of everything. Well, yeah. Eighty six. Yeah. Okay, so time out, Ben. So I've had a couple people ask. How does any of this all work? So let's just quickly go over the rules here. The way that the live sale works is kind of in two places. You have the YouTube video, of course, but to actually purchase corals, you go to titlegardens.com, and on that page you will see a flashing red dot for live sale. You go to that page, and you will see, un well, basically this, this video is embedded there, and below that there's going to be all the different um, numbered items so we're on number 86 right now so you just if you wanted this parietes for example you put just put number 86 in your card and check out uh, shipping is a flat rate 39.99 it's free over 250 but in order to actually purchase the coral you have to put it into your cart and then fully check out and, and do the payment and everything like that so if you're going to be checking out multiple times be sure to select local pickup slash live sale to avoid getting a whole bunch of shipping charges. Now, if you happen to do that by accident, don't worry, we'll just go ahead and refund you. So anyway, back to that. And a real quick shout out to Patreon guys, Phil, Mark, Robert, Steve, Ryan, Dave, Nate, Nancy, Jeff, Sam, Matthew, and Mark. Thanks guys. Okay, and we're back on track. Okay. Pet codes are the same as pets at home, awful. <laughs> I you know I, I haven't been to a Petco ever I don't think like, I have um, I I don't know I've bought like my Eheim auto feeder there I bought mm -hmm. food there dry food um, you know how it is you know people either like you or they don't yeah so 
I'm sure Peco doesn't mind who likes them and who doesn't like them. They're yeah. going to keep moving. <laughs> yeah, they're busy making a, a quarter billion a year, I'm sure. Yeah, right. Um, I have clowns, Coral Beauty, Pet Shop guys, they get a tang. He says, good for cleaning green algae. Will it also take care of small tube worms and feather dusters? No. They don't really do that. What was it? Uh, I think it d does a tang kill no. small tube worms? No. no, it doesn't. No. Um, Butterfly fish, yes. Yes. Met the VP for Petco, and we talked about the tank that was built for them by Tanked on the show. They said the maintenance was, was crap. Tank went awful. Yeah, I could see that. Sometimes, you know, a lot of, like, quote-unquote creative tanks. Yeah aren't designed to be maintained. They're designed to be sh photographed once and thrown and, away. And, and, and yeah. Like or auctioned off for somebody just to say, yeah. hey, this is who built it. I don't know. Yeah. But then again, it, yeah. Like I, I, I wouldn't want a tank that's six feet deep unless, unless I'm looking forward to diving in it because that would be such a, a hassle. There's, there, I wouldn't see other way, no other way but you diving in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I w there's no way. Not six feet deep. No way. Paul Holden. Hi, Than. Currently in Florida on vacation from England. I have problems keeping torch corals. Been told they like minimum flow. How do you run a reef tank with hardly any flow? You? Uh, well, okay. No. So that's interesting. So I run l generally low flow. But if I had the ability to up my flow a little bit more, I probably would. Um, and I don't think that um, your torch issue is necessarily from too much flow. They're kind of sensitive these days in general. Okay, Narcosis Coral says Pet Co owns Dr. Foster's and Smith and Live Aquarium, but it's still owned and or run by the original owners. Which always kind of confused me. Okay, how does that work? Yeah, it's like I uh, mean, for real. If somebody bought out Title Gardens, you know what I wouldn't be doing? Working I don't think you'd be here, right? Yeah, I don't. Well, except for I, I live here. Well, but uh, presumably they would, they would just you know, <laughs> like really buy me out. But Johan M. Petco is cool. If there's a good aquatics employee on hand, finding good help. There you go. It's it's hard. Yeah. You should time lapse Duncan's eating. Yeah, that's a good one for that. Did you see the one? I think it was Scott uh, Roscoe's Reef mm -hmm. said. Now you need to go back and redo all your videos in 4K. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Like, I, how many videos have you made so far on your channel? I don't know. I don't think I have a whole lot, to be quite honest. Once you get into like the couple hundreds. It comes becomes really difficult to find new topics to, to, to talk about and to, to actually. I, I kind of feel like I'm in that stage just because of all the live streams mm -hmm. that I've done. Yeah. To actually go out and make a video, I've done talked about so much. It's like I, I feel like I'm running out of things to talk about. Um, and, I and, just and you, allow people to ask me questions, even though if I'm repeat myself ten yeah, times. Yeah, because because there's a lot of repetition. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. You know what? Me shoot me reshooting all of my coral topics in 4K. Fine by me. <laughs> that I can do. Okay. Me me coming up with new and interesting the, hot the, takes. No. Is harder. The, the, well, the only thing you could probably do is kind of go into like the vlog stuff. Well, here's my day at Tidal Garden. Okay, this is what I'm doing today. Well, I don't know what you're doing. I, I, there, yeah, it gets to that point where you just don't know what to shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, it'd be me playing Clash of Clans. Uh, there you go. Me testing my fragrances. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I wouldn't be that entertaining. I, you know what? You'd be surprised at um, what what people actually will. See. Well, you said it earlier about the tank just being up and how many people were just. Yeah, that's true. I mean, seriously. So, You'd be surprised yeah. what people actually want to see. The world we live in today. <laughs> yeah, actually, I am surprised because there's like some very, very popular YouTube channels out there, and I'm like, why on earth is this popular? 
Like, there you go. I, I'm an old man that does not understand these young kids and their, their pants and their rock and roll and all that stuff. <laughs> get off my lawn. Because I don't get it. Who are these people? Why are they popular? And that's how you know you've, you've, you're officially old. Yeah, old. So when you're, when you're asking that question, like, yeah. what's with these kids these days? They don't work hard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. You sending the C100 to me in Dayton. Oh, are you selling it? I didn't no. know you were selling it. <laughs> it's not for sale. <laughs> I, I need it. Like, like the, 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 it's, it's kind of funny, but it's like, you know what, what, what's better than like a, like a really good cinema camera? Like two of them. Because now you can use two cameras to do different angles, angles and stuff. Yeah. I'd so, probably wait till after the first one come up off the credit card. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I told I mentioned this to you like when I was at your house, but like when I purchased this uh, when I purchased this new camera, my credit score instantaneously dropped like six points, <laughs> like it, instantly. And uh, I was like, whatever. I mean, I, I, it's it's all paid it, off already. But it's like it, just the act of purchasing, purchasing it, it was like blam. See ya. And, and the funny part about that, it's not going to go bam right back up, yep. like five or six points. It doesn't just happen like that. Yeah. So. So wait till I put my Tesla on my credit card. Uh, 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 well, I will definitely be the first one in there, photographing, doing a video. Okay, guys. So watch, 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 watch this. Bang! <laughs> it's like I'm officially poor by anybody's metric now. Tesla. Wow. No, that's what that's what I want. But I, actually. I don't want to be buying a car, but my car is getting old. My car is like 10 years old. So something's got to happen. Well, I think you need to expand the greenhouse. Yes. And then have me here and, you know, help with this. I mean, a monster of a farm. Do you want to propagate corals? Yeah, there we go. I, I, always, I always offer, like, it, it's, it's usually to my... By the way, I love this coral. Do you have one of these? It's a no, Rainbow that, Phoenix Montes. Uh, no. It almost looks like the... Um, what are they selling that? They're calling that the... Uh, Similar to a peach bomb. Peach, peach, bomb, peach bomb. bomb. Yeah. So there's like five yep. corals that all kind of look like that. So it's... I think it's a lot of it has to do with just the lighting and, and how they're kept. And the, it's like the moment you take that photo, it's mm -hmm. one of these things. It's like Schrodinger's cat. You know, it's like, is it dead? Is it alive in the box? Right. But it's like... As soon as you take the photo, it's one of these things. They all kind of look similar. Like sometimes they'll have like a little red highlight. Sometimes they'll have a purple and a green. But a lot of it, I think it's just different lighting. But I could be wrong. I, I you know what? I They're all I've seen corals that I've gave away that looks totally different than what I still have in my tank. So mm -hmm. especially with SPS, right? Oh yeah, like Acros and Montes. Change I'm talking about even some that are. Like got some weird colors that never did it in my tank. I uh, <laughs> I mean, like, are you serious? We purchased some corals recently from one of our suppliers, and my staff is convinced that it's one of our corals that we already sold to that same distributor that we just purchased <laughs> back because it because it looks a little bit different under their lighting, and I just said, give me two of those. <laughs> it's like yeah. So I, I, I bought my own corals back. I, I'm probably sure I've done it myself. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, I have so many... Joker Favia. They all compete my LPS calcium. Any um, fix for that? What are, these, what are these worms? Is there another name for those worms? Because I'm not quite sure. Yeah, me either. Uh, What's the easiest euphilia, Paul Holden? Um, some like Indonesian frog spawn, probably. Yeah, like the, for sure. Purple tips. Green body purple tips, those are pretty easy. Mm -hmm. PR Fish Girl, love these Montes. Next time I'll be all ready to buy. Awesome. I will look forward to it. So you get CEO pay in commission. You always need an income. 
Well, what other ways would you go broke? Um, I, I, I go broke because I like to spend money until I run out of it. See, I don't think people really understand, well, maybe depending on their age, but the more you make, the more you spend. Uh, unless you're, uh, unless you're really responsible, like unless well, you're like. but we always have that moment, like whatever. We're having fun. Well, that, I don't that, know. that's the thing about like, about, about money in general. From when, like, I, I've got some very high net worth friends, and essentially it comes down to this. Okay, so when you have more money, it's just more things feel like they're free now. For example, if you went to the grocery store, went to the office section and said, hey, I, there's this pen for $3, mm -hmm. would, would, and you wanted that pen, would the fact of it that it's cost $3 ever come into your mind? You'd probably just buy the damn pen, right? right? That's kind of what it's like, but it's for bigger stuff. So it's like, you know what? Yeah. If you wanted the car, just buy the car. Just buy it. Just buy it. And mm -hmm. it's like, but for, for people that don't have the money like me, um, it'd be like, Wow, that that that's a very expensive car, and I can't get something like that. But like once you actually do have the money, then it becomes like more or less free again. You know, it's it's all just like this perspective that having more money puts on you, mm -hmm. and like it never really. And it, it, it what's weird is it doesn't change your happiness at all. It, oh, it's no. just it's just different stuff that you're able to get now. So anyway. Right. <clears throat> Hey, Aqua TV, how's it going, man? Glad to see you make it. Lucas is like saying, we create our own poverty. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, it, we it, do. And it, it doesn't help that this is like a, <laughs> this is a selling show <laughs> where like, right. buy some coral, guys. You need it in your life. It'll make you happier. <laughs> you want to just buy it. I know you want to. Uh, Than whatever happened to that coral which had symbiotic relationship with tiny crabs in it? I remember you did a video on them. Now we oh. have one still, um, but we're not really selling it. And like the price tag of those things has shot through the roof, like I think hundreds I of dollars to acquire. You used to have it in this this tank here. Yeah, it's it's because, now in this one. Okay, yeah, because I seen it and I actually thought about. It. They're, they're really he, cool. He wasn't selling it then, neither. Yeah. Yeah, like he wasn't letting it go. Either. Yeah. Lucas is like, I get a pay raise, I'll spend more money. He, he's a local guy, so he's been here. Oh, before. hey, how's it going, Lucas? What, what's a good acro for beginners? I'm not really sure that there is one. I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say, and crucify me later. <laughs> I would say get something relatively inexpensive locally and, uh, and try to go from there, because at least you know that it's, that, that's been grown in an aquarium, there's relatively little travel associated, and you probably got it for an inexpensive cost. I would start there, um, rather than looking for a particular type of Acropora. Yeah. Okay, so they're, they're little tiny feather dusters. Uh, they're curled up, very tough to the touch. Are they like white? Because there's, there's like little white ones with the red heads. Really? curled up tight is there tubes like uh what do you call them the, like the glass like you, they real sharp well i think those point. are vermitted snails right no 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 uh -huh. they're they're white tubes um but they're that they, they, every now and then i'll get hit you know uh from grabbing a rock and it actually it's like glass when, when you touch them oh um, um i forget what the they're just really sharp tube worms uh hmm. they create this uh, outside of feather dusters, but you really never see the worm. That's what's confusing to me. Huh. Outside of feather dusters, like yeah, for, for minute snails, do you really see those, or no. are they just Only putting out their, their their sperm? Is what that is. Yeah, sperm. They're just waiting. Oh, it's, I thought it's like a mucus net that they cast I, out there know and what, they draw back. I've heard it's that. I've heard it's putting out sperm, uh, I, you know. I, I've heard a couple of different things. I, could I could be, be sperm, wrong. Considering I, how much they breed. Right, like they go exactly. Crazy. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have a couple really? that I allow. There's like maybe like two of them in my system. They don't bother anything. They don't bother me. Um, I don't have a problem. They're not multiplying. If they do, they're coming out. Mm -hmm. I will get to them, but uh, people say they actually That's kill the coral. So good. That looks really good. But actually, just, just just our corals in general these days are looking so nice. 
I, I'm, I'm like, says, I'm really, you know, patting my patting myself on the back here, and patting Ben on the back, and my mom, and my dad, but like they, they, they've, and Sean, if you're watching, personal trainer Sean, he does water changes here. Uh, it, it's it's showed. People ask me about year. that when it comes to you and your water change. You what? It, we should do a video on that. But we, our, our water change technique is not good. Like we, okay. we do them. But I mean, ideally, people should do them like one of uh, the guys that um, we talk to a lot is Nathan. Uh -huh. He's got an awesome water change system. It does like continuous water changes, mm -hmm. and then he also has a system to do like a big water change all at once. It's that's like how to do it. Like not like how we do it. We just kind of make it happen. I think you can make that happen. Set some up where you're changing each each system. Well, you probably have to get. Make some room for some big. Is this one ten, Ben? One ten. Okay. Make some room for. Uh, that's the hardest holding thing. thing you know, we, we, some holding tanks. That change a gallon a day. Like have it set up where yeah. it removes a gallon and puts in a gallon. Sorry, Ben. Is this one eleven? No. Oh, sorry. It's one eleven now. It's 111 now. <laughs> <laughs> I messed up. It's the same thing. I've done messed it's up. It's the same thing. So. <clears throat> okay, I'm sure that we missed a bunch of questions. I'm sure. Uh, how do I buy the Pinstripe Fabio for 20? Um, you go to titlegardens.com slash live sale or something, and um, the, the entire numbered list is. So like we're on uh, number, item number 111, so if you wanted to purchase this, there's an item there, possibly, if somebody didn't already buy it. Toss that into your shop, shopping cart and check out. Uh, waiting on to win Rico's contest to spend my Title Gardens gift card. There you go. <laughs> we don't do enough contests. I'm not creative enough. Any livestock that will eat bristle worms? Yes, lots. He has a 20 gallon tank. Which ones are you thinking would eat bristle worms? What would eat bristle worms? Yeah, a lot of things, right? Uh, yeah. Off the top of your head? Uh, Melanaris Rass or something like that. Yeah, you Copper know. Bands will do it too. Copper Bands. Six Lines. Uh, six Lines. Pseudochromus uh, Fridmanae. Yep. But the thing is, why would you want to get rid of the bristle worms? I so, don't understand this. Ben hates bristle worms. I like them. I think they're cute. I, they, they're, they're there to do a job. I, like I don't them. know why they got a bad rep, but I mean, I don't mind them being in my system. I, 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 I think there's still some left. I just don't see them anymore. <laughs> you have like you have you have like a dozen rasses. You're never gonna yeah, see them. Yeah, I'm actually like more. down five or so, and I plan on putting like ten more back into it. They do such good work. They they really do. For everybody out there, this is why you should have a bigger tank. Is because you can put an army of fish that that, that does a wonderful job of maintaining a pest free system, mm -hmm. an algae controlled system. Uh, no aptasia. I mean, basically, if you have a copper band butterfly, you're not going to see aptasia. Period. I actually got a file fish in my system. And people yeah. are like, no you don't bother? No. And no yeah. aptasia or nothing. Do I get it in other parts of the system? Of course, because there's no, you know, nothing there to yeah. disturb it. But in my system, my main display, you're not going to find anything. I just always thought they were kind of ugly. That's why I never had one. They are. And they're, they, you are limited to certain things, like the plate corals and stuff that don't bother um scolies it will bother acans it mm. bother um but i give i used to give him a little whooping with the stick i used to tap because he, he'll sit there however he's not scared of the stick so i would like tap him with the stick and he eventually stopped messing with the acans and stuff hmm. but i also say uh, a lot of fish that give you problems if you feed them the What's biggest the problem i have is people not feeding their system mm -hmm. like they want to feed their fish every other day i'm like well do you eat every other day or every two days, like I have a problem with that. Yeah, I never quite understood that. Me neither. I, I we feed every day here. Well, I understand it in terms of they don't understand how to keep nutrients and levels down, mm -hmm. uh, how to keep uh, from getting like uh, nuisance algae and stuff. But a lot of people's systems are not designed, and some people we got to realize that. Uh, they might not have the space for such a large system mm -hmm. to have so many fish to do a certain job. So then that's where that comes into play. So, but you can always upscale something and downscale something. Mm -hmm. So just remember if you, if you're limited to space, well then you should be limiting your nutrients import. That doesn't mean you don't not feed your system. 
it means you do it more controllable being you know you actually pay attention and making sure you're just not dumping a bunch of food that the fish whatever food is being in there that is just getting it, it is getting um uh, eaten or whatever but it's not floating like my sister i don't have to really worry about that i could dump a bunch of food but there's such a big export method that's on my system that mm -hmm. keeps me from having the problems and just the fish alone right tangs and stuff and i think that that, that is probably more of a of an issue um, than people really th often think about, but it's you're not overfeeding if the food makes it into the animal. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah it's like so. Sometimes like you can feed less, but if it, if you're broadcast feeding and it's just getting all throughout the tank and small, tiny little you know, micro <laughs> things that's not you know that's never gonna be swallowed by a tank because it's just, you know micro like uh, what, do you oh, what do you call it? Um, just like the, the, the super fine plankton and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that is going to pollute your tank. Um, but if you if all of the stuff you're dumping in makes it into your uh, your fauna, it's not going to be uh, like this nutrient export problem at all. I mean, it's like you basically want to turn everything into poop as fast as possible, mm -hmm. and you generally speaking won't have any of these like you know side problems. Yeah, these chalices are looking real nice. They today. look real nice, to be honest. <laughs> looking real nice. Might put me back on a chalice kick. I might have to leave <laughs> there with some. Thoughts on the Majestic Angel about my first one? I, I like the Majestic Angel. Um, I wouldn't trust it in my system personally just because uh, they, they do nibble a I'd, lot. I'd probably put one in my system, to be honest. I've thought about it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're gorgeous fish. Oh, yeah. I've never owned one before, though, so I can't really say. Me neither, to be honest. Sinking shrimp do. pellets feed both my fish and my corals. Yeah, that'll work. Goes three mils of calc. That's um, very little. It's like three mLs of calc. Depends on the system size, though. Three mils is this much. Maybe it's a pico tank. Maybe like a two gallon. Tank. I don't know. <laughs> You're talking like like. Like a quart, <laughs> or they have a shot glass aquarium size. I mean, well, I always the rule of thumb is a teaspoon per fifty gallons yeah. of calc. What's your thoughts? Um, Without any problem, I mean, you can actually just dump that we, in. We just we 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 dump in huge amounts of calc into a large container and drip the entire container in. Yeah, that's normally what I do if yeah. I'm going to use it. So, I mean, we we would dump. If, if 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 I could, I would do ten gallons per system per day. That's a good question. That you, I mean, since we're on calc, um, I should do a video what, on calc. What? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not is it, what I just described there. It's not quite that simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not that simple. Because calc, calc wasser is a super saturated solution, so you make this. Uh, you, you dump it into in, into fresh water. You don't have to really stir it up or anything like that. What will happen is it'll get cloudy for a while and then it'll settle out. But that that clear portion isn't just water. It's now calc wasser. It's a mm -hmm. super saturated calcium hydroxide solution. And that has to be dripped very, very slowly back into your aquarium in an area of high flow. So there's kind of like a, a little bit of an arch to it. But if you do that, it, it fixes a lot of issues in your tank and, and most people do it for calcium and alkalinity supplementation, but it also helps reduce phosphate, it helps your protein skimming, it does tons of other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like I said, I would probably uh, drip in my systems, which are close to a thousand gallons, 10 gallons a day, no, no problem. What's your thoughts on that? Because a lot of people ask me, and I'm like, yeah, uh, about the uh, calc precipitating phosphates out of the water. Mm -hmm. It will. I mean, it's just, it's just chemistry because, like, the calc wasser has a, a pH of like 12 or something, like su it's something not, super you, high. Yeah. And so just, just the, the mere fact that it is such a strong base will take a lot of stuff out of solution. solution yeah. Which, again, gets skimmed out. Makes it available to get skimmed out. Right. Just bind everything up. Mm -hmm. Are my favorite pink ghanis in this sale? They are. Um, 
I forget what number they are, Ben. 23. And then there's another 87. Yeah, so if, if, you're, uh, if, you, if you've missed some stuff in the past, I think you can scrub back in the timeline and then catch it back up later. I've had a Majestic for two months now, guys. So far, my reef tank hasn't been disturbed. They're so beautiful. Good. That is better than the alternative possibility with those fish. Who wants my camel strip? Nope. No, I'm good on camel. <laughs> a long time ago, the camel shrimp. I once uh, purchased mm -hmm. a piece of live rock in a tank that had camel shrimp because I was hoping that one of those shrimp would be on that rock and, and uh, because they're like, yeah, you know, I, I got a free shrimp out of the deal. Right. And it turns out that, oh, this thing's on my clam 24-7. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. it turns out that they eat clams. And then they also eat coral. <laughs> so I'm good on camel shrimp. My clown wishes to host in my lobophilia. Any tips on making it stop? Get rid of the, get rid of the jerk clownfish. Clowns do a lot of damage. Like, uh, like we, we get customers in here all the time asking. You know I have five in that system, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have clownfish. We, we have a couple clownfish that we've somehow received. Um, but, like, people are, are trying to get them to, uh, to host in, like, their euphilia. It's like, that's going to end poorly for the euphilia. They're going to cause damage. To mm -hmm. the euphilia, you're gonna end up losing your euphilia. I, I've I've no, I've seen it done, but clowns can be very very rough when yes. it comes to hosting things. So, good so luck. My personal trainer Sean, he of course has like the most aggressive clown, it's like the gold bar maroons, and it's like that is just a bad. It that's a bad 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 fish to get. It's such trouble. Mm. And then, then he, uh, on top of that, he was sold uh, a tang, okay? It is a yellow and blue striped hippo tang. That's how, that's how he, he, he said the store described it to him. And then we're like, a striped hippo. He's like, yeah, it's the same body shape as a, as a hippo, but it's, it's, it's blue and yellow striped. I'm like, yellow belly? I know. <laughs> you know striped. what it was? What? It was a clown tang. Ah. They are big. They get big and they yeah. Get, they get it, deadly. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, they're this cute is, when they're little, but I don't. What do they get? To? They're like, what, two feet? Two feet? Yeah. <laughs> and they're deadly. They're absolutely deadly. These are, this is 131, Ben? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They're cute when they're small, but you don't know what you're getting yourself into when they get No, they're it's, they're so scary. And then again, he has that with a gold bar maroon. And I'm just like I'm, th this is like fight club that's about to that break out. tank yeah. pretty much. What up? Yeah. Uh, okay, so oh dear in pubs. Why is it bad for a clown to host in a coral? So clownfish just by their very presence is just all that physical touching and, and, and slamming into the coral stresses coral out. It stresses anemones out, but it, in the wild, the, the stress that the anemone puts on the fish and the fish puts on the anemone is yeah. counteracted by the fact that like the fish protects the anemone from and feeds butterflies yeah, yeah. And, 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 and feeds it. But in a, in a home aquarium, when you have like a euphilia that for all intents and purposes is already safe, and you have this fish slamming up on it, it's bad for the, it's bad for the coral. Is it possible to win the war on Asterina snails by manual removal without getting a harlequin shrimp? I have a peppermint hog in the system. I'm scared he will eat the shrimp if I add it. Hey, hey he, he will, will eat the shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Guaranteed. Hey, yeah, he will. Beautiful fish, though. Um, here's the thing. Yes, you can win the war on Asterina stars. And I know this because, oh, you know what? It's funny that you're here. Uh, I got rid of the, yours. I used to, remember yeah. that one you used to have here? Yeah, so we used to have one here. <laughs> and we have, we have 5,000 gallons of reef, reef systems here. And we would have to hunt down starfish to feed this guy, like 50 to 100 a day. 
and we were towards the end we were having a hard time finding starfish in 5,000 gallons now had we just diligently taken those starfish and removed them from our system we would never have needed the shrimp mm -hmm. and then one day Rico actually wanted to, to borrow it and mm -hmm. eventually had to get rid of it I guess yeah yeah like the only, I, I didn't see any left in my system and somebody else was having the same problem so I paid it for passed it on and now I have some that's back so obviously he didn't get to them all um, what's funny is though with those guys as soon as he I initially put him in there and he got a hold of one I don't know if the starfish like let out some kind of juice or signs that are screamed help because the starfish actually all started going up the glass like they were running mm -hmm. from <laughs> I was like like did he just like yell for help or get out of here he's got me <laughs> like I don't know it was funny though and I had, and I was, it made it easier actually, because then I was actually physically removing them as well. Mm -hmm. So we got to a point where I never seen any. And I'm like, okay, well, one day he was in a position where I can get to him. Took him out, passed him on, but I actually need to get one. But I'm kind of leery now because some of the wrasses are really big, like uh, the Melanaris ras and this uh, green uh, coarse ras. Mm -hmm. I think they would, they would eat the shrimp. I, and that's what I'm afraid of. I think at this point that they will eat him. And if you order one of these things online, there's a really, really, really ch good chance it's going to come in microscopic sized. Yes. No, I need one full grown, pretty, pretty darn big if I'm going to try it. Yeah. Like the one that eventually you got sold could fit in a damsel's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's like... Mm-hmm. I was recently eating raw oysters and found a baby stone crab. Huh. Uh, okay. Interesting. Stone crabs are delicious. Have you ever had stone crabs? No, I have not tried it. Crazy delicious. Expensive though. Somebody just asked me if I, uh, because my big, big uh, black spine urchin, I don't know, did you see that in there? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he's, he's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, he's probably hiding on you. Um, in the display. Yeah, he's in the okay. display. Um, I'm getting ready to rehome him. Uh -huh. I have another one that's microscopic. Well, I bought yay big that I'm going to put in that tank. Let him grow. Out. I don't know what I'm going to do with this guy. But they asked me, have I ever ate one of those? Have you? Uh, you eat the eggs. So like uh, it's called uni. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a, it's like this uh, orange kind of like yeah. A, that's a what they said. Like you paste. Over... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've had it plenty of times. So they, they just carry eggs in them, period? No. I, I actually, so how I don't do know. you So how do you it's know? Not it's the actual, it's, it's the, the Oh, it's the inners? I think they're the eggs. It's, well, you might be right, but it's always referred to as raw. Because it's like, like you're going to kill this animal, but you don't know if there's eggs in it? <laughs> I, well, people do that all the time. Well, like, they do. But for the sake of just trying to urge yeah. it. <laughs> Um, it, it, it's so, so Ben, you have to understand like Ohio uni yeah. is not uni. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that, that's another thing. Like one of the reasons why I like don't eat sushi in the United States typically is because I've had sushi in Japan. It's different. It, it ruins it for you stateside, especially, yeah. I mean, and, and, like people in like the Pacific Northwest that have salmon mm -hmm. and then like you eat salmon here. It's not this. It, it doesn't the taste same. the same. Yeah. Mahi mahi in, in Hawaii, different than mahi mahi in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Something's lost in translation. It's called it's good flavor. Good. Will anything eat my camel shrimp? Large wrasses will. Uh, yeah. Fast. One forty-two. One forty-two. for a few years now. I can't see that they hurt the corals anymore. Well, here's the thing: clownfish can fill graveyards of coral. 
here's the thing. There are, okay, not okay. It's like when we were talking about angels. It, it's a hit and miss. Okay, some are just way more aggressive than others. Mm-hmm. Just got lucky. You know, if, if it's not doing any harm, then you got lucky. And some corals are more tolerant than others to it. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's, there's like especially with, with, with the, the example we're using is euphilia. Right. Euphilia these days sometimes you look at them wrong and they they, they die like they are they're that touchy that's how acros are yeah acros are very touchy yeah. i try not to look at look at them too long <laughs> <laughs> just lo- leave them alone and let them do their thing like sometimes like a little bit of neglect is good for it's, the tank i i say definitely some neglect goes a long way with keeping any reef tank and I mean neglect as far as keeping your hands out the tank and stop constantly you know just let it do what it's gonna do look at that that is yeah you know what I'm I'm gonna go ahead and call this might be the best like some of these corals have looked like ever yeah like I don't I can't imagine it's gonna get a lot better looking than that I mean for Superman Monty obviously you're looking for a blue base right I mean that is like a stark difference there. Pink and yellow, Ghani. 200, 250 at the shop. Hmm. Say what? Right oh, there where you're at, yeah. Wondering about those amazing pink and yellow Ghanis that you had for. Uh, I don't know if we have one of those on the live sale or not. No. Yeah, they're they're all they're all what you see is what you get on the site. Um. Do we have one in, in eyesight here? We don't. Oh, actually, you can kind of see it, like in, in the bow front behind. The, do you see that little pink dot? No worries. They're nice. Yeah. I, I, but, but he's not into he's not into Ghanis anyway. One forty six. Are Superman Montes encrusting or plating? They are encrusting. encrusting. Did you did you change your salt or something? Nope. nope so is it just that the time of the season for these corals or what? That has a lot to do with it. Because seriously, I'm not. They look I mean, good. I, yeah, you know, I, I've been here multiple times and looked at things, and I think part part of it. Is, I mean, even outside of him doing what he's doing right now, just like mm-hmm. looking at the coral off yeah. a camera looks because okay. Corals look good. So now that we have like a, like another eyewitness, okay. That picture versus what you see over there. That's what that looks like, right? Yes. It's like it's not any kind of like that's weird. Why I brought mystic. it up because I'm looking physically, looking at it, looking at it. It looks good. Yeah. So. It, 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 I think a lot of it. It has to do with season. We're finally getting out of like crazy summer nonsense. Like summer sucks. Yeah. The screen is a tad dark, Ben. Hola from Singapore. It's 3.45 a.m. here. Melvin, welcome. I love Singapore. That's one of my favorite places to visit. It's so cool there. It's like, it's like this place that's made of infinite money. Like they just go super crazy on everything imaginable. <laughs> like they, uh, I don't know if you're into like auto racing or anything like that, but they do like an F1 race in like their city streets at in the downtown at night like we can't get away with that here no. No. <laughs> we're going straight Actually, to jail <laughs> we, we have yeah we, we ha- well i mean that's like a, like a like a, an f1 race like a like a real oh okay sanction yeah, ray, oh yeah. sanction and all okay yeah so it, they're, they're trying to make it like as glamorous as like uh, like monaco and like they, they try to do everything better than everybody and i kind of like i I describe it affectionately as like a high functioning dictatorship because mm-hmm. it, it's, it's very strict there. Like you're not allowed to have, have anything that could end up making mosquitoes. So like government agents will like come onto your property and look to see if you have any like jars of standing water. Standard water, yeah. And if you have one, it's like a hundred dollar fine. Wow. If you don't wear your seatbelt, it's like a $500 fine. It's like they're, it's 
like they are not messing around with mm. with anything. If you, if you like to smoke the 420, <laughs> that could be a death sentence. Oh my. Yeah, but I, I love it there. No hate at all. So we got our orange lip this there. Huh? Chris Fisher, and what's going on? Or is that Chris uh, Fernandez is um, showing some love? <laughs> Don't know who that is. I know who he is. He's bl he's banned. <laughs> I need a wrench. I don't get that reference. I wish I did. Uh, wrench is just people that when oh, other people oh. do that, you don't have to do it. They'll oh. handle it for you. Oh no no no! no. I, I I need to be the guy. Oh you. It, it, you it's, it's like the man who passes the, the the sentence has to swing the sword or whatever it is in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I, I haven't I, seen it, and a lot of people tell me it's good, so I take it. Oh wait wait wait! You like like any of it? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. Um, is it worth my? Is it worth me taking the time out of my day? Okay, you to like, watch this. You should. You should. Okay. However, okay, don't be in a hurry. The, the best seasons are the early seasons, like ah. like like season like like five six seven. Mm -hmm. If you're only into the show, it's kind of fan servicey. It kind of does its own thing, but um, the the early seasons are like really really good. Okay, like, like some of the best TV ever. Uh, are blue coat pops <laughs> easy slash hard or like zinnia corals uh, that hit or miss? Okay. Blue cloves is one of these kind of corals that either they're going to do good in your system or they're not going to do good in your system. You either going to love them or you're going to hate them. So th that's pretty much to sum it up when it comes to uh, blue cloves. You, you either got to be understand what they're going to do if they, they love your system. As Dan walked into my house and seen how I utilize them because I don't Super cool. like coralline algae. I don't like coralline algae because I love live rock and I feel coralline algae grow so thick they cover up all the surface area the pores of that rock and limits my part of my filtration um, next build I probably won't and I'll probably do it the way everybody else you know does it and probably won't put any blue clothes in I don't know I'm just saying but you either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it when it comes to blue clothes don't think that you're gonna put it in and it let it it takes off that you're going to just get it out because it's not coming out. You're going to tear it down. You're going to you're going to kill the rock. You're going to have to do whatever. It's not going to come out unless something happens where it just doesn't like its levels so, or parameters or whatever the case may be. But if you do a search on online, all the topics are about how to remove <laughs> blue clove polyps. If you type in blue clove polyp into Google, so it's it's kind of funny. But like I like. I was saying um, when I made that video, it's that it's it's a creative use, and it had like this really spectacular result. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the first time I, like I personally have ever seen anything like that. And it's like that is really cool. It probably wouldn't work for me because it's like the, like the, the the little bit of combat that's happening in your tank is, mm -hmm. isn't killing stuff. Right. In my tank, it's probably gonna kill stuff. And yeah, I, I you know I I knew what I was getting into when I introduced that stuff. Um, I've tried it before. Uh, and it didn't like uh, in another system. It wouldn't do nothing. It would just melt away. Um, and in this system, it likes whatever that's in there. Um, I think it looks great. And when you want to like buy frags, I glue right over it. Like I glue right on it. It, 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 it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't hurt. You know, everything's fine. It, the coral still grows, um, but it takes away dead void spots like you see rock that he, he, just empty spaces like so and with you, this you it just, glue are you talking about like, like cement or, or like super no. glue ah super glue gel super glue. yeah super glue gel dollar store nothing fancy mm -hmm. um i just glue right over top of it um it actually if you want to use a turkey baser if you blow hard enough with that it comes right off hmm. Like it will just blow off into the water column, but it does very well. It actually produces spores, eggs. Like you'll see some days you'll come over and it'll be a bunch of eggs just flying around in the tank. And it's from oh. them. 
they re, they're reproducing like crazy, and it's just yeah. so it likes whatever I got going on. Did you get that from Two Turtles back in the day or something? What that tank? Blue Clove. No, 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 no. I actually got that from uh, the farmer in Dayton oh, okay. uh, when I was picking up uh, you know a bunch of corals to uh, put in that system. Some of those, some of those cor really majority of those corals are from here. And I'm back, yeah. fools. You can't ban me. Who is that? I don't know. But what made another account? But I don't know. I mean, we could play. <laughs> like, like I said, I'm not. I'm not joking. <laughs> sorry, I missed that. This is this is 158, you guys. Okay, sorry. Let's you see. just banned him, but he's back. Uh, is a wonderful channel. Moderate always on the. I feel sorry for Ben because we're just like ramming it on. He's shooting out numbers and he's probably like, shut up and get to the next number. <laughs> keep going, keep going. One sixty. Donny Pora, hard to keep. Mm, that's that's a that's a fifty fifty there. Yeah, I I mean I've seen it go. I, I don't know. That's that's more on your subject. I don't it's, have them to really talk about, but it depends on which kinds you get. Some are very, very, very challenging, practically, uh, practically impossible, and others are like super easy. So it covers the whole spectrum. And so the reason why you might hear that they're very difficult is because for the longest time, the ones being imported were the ones that that guaranteed to die. And but lately, there there's been several strains that that do very well. Uh, Melvin, any idea how to bring out reds in SPS? I'm gonna say it doesn't. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> check, check, check your levels. Meaning, I don't know if you talked about it neither. About major elements, it's not you know, and you got your minors like calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, uh -huh. and what potassium. It's really considered major element. Uh huh. I would I would definitely check those check all your levels and yeah because I mean you know iodine and stuff like that you want to be very careful with right unless you're checking <laughs> definitely <laughs> don't <laughs> definitely don't dose anything that you're not testing right for, for sure but um, but each one of those things have their enhanced colors mm -hmm. and each one of them is going to do whatever color it is you're looking for so you need to I would say test test uh, your parameters and see what's going on there um, and also depends on your I would say your light too as well because I've have corals that uh, potassium is at 420 and mm -hmm. stuff like that and uh, well it's kind of supposed to be isn't it 400 okay. about 400 range I know sometimes I get up to like 440 somewhere but um, when I'm doing a couple blind doses <laughs> Yeah, blind dosing with no water changes. <laughs> blind dosing with no water changes. So I don't advise people to do that. Um, but uh, I've, I've had corals that are red, even though the parameters are where they're supposed to be at. Um, I'm, and I've took a frag of something and moved it into the same water column, uh, but it's, a, it's on a frag rack. So it's not quite where it grew from and more of a pink color versus the deep red color so i would say you know maybe check the lighting yeah i would say that yeah i mean lighting is probably going to affect it more than anything, anything yeah. right so you're probably going to have to experiment with that just a little bit thanks for the tips i'll bring you guys around singapore if you ever come i i might I might. I'm saving up a lot of uh, frequent flyer miles for something, and I'm trying to convince my friends to go to Singapore. Um, if somebody's paying, I'll go, but... <laughs> it's expensive. Exactly. I already know. Sing uh, Sing yeah. Singapore is one of the most expensive places on Earth. It's like San Francisco. You don't Francisco. have to buy my food. I'll take care of that. But you get my plane ticket, and hey, my bags are packed. It's a very, very good time, though, for sure. If somebody actually suggested me and you... Um, do a diving video or something. Go diving together. 
It's like, well, let me go get certified. That's, I mean, that's, I don't, that's I'm not a, afraid of that's water. An I can swim. Quest. <laughs> I love diving. So I'd be more, uh, more scared of not coming up slow enough and getting a case of the bins or something. I don't know. Why is this guy with you on the live stream? Yeah, why? Are, why is this guy with me? I, I I don't know. Why am I? Why am I here? He's a special guest. <laughs> if you if uh, you've watched the past couple of videos, uh, I did a I did a video of his tank. It's a very 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 nice SPS tank. So hold on one sec, Ben. I'm gonna. It looks like this. Pretty neat. So the, the so the folks that are interested in uh, in his tank, it's we we covered it kind not not super in depth but in but kind of in depth in uh, in about a ten minute video mm -hmm. and like right now you're just seeing like uh, some of the equipment stuff but um, I promise that video does have I'll wait till it actually shows your tank hold on sorry there it is so quite a nice tank full of SPS and some other uh, pretty creative details that kind of sets it apart. So anyhow. Uh, signal, hilarious. Yes, it's hilarious because we didn't do nothing. Here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> uh, audio gone. Sound drop. I think I'm dead. <laughs> it's back. They said it's back. Uh, it's back. It's back. back. So okay, we're back. I don't know. We don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like hmm, looking at the connections. Look fine. Looking at my my levels, they look <laughs> fine. They. Well, you know, I appreciate you guys telling me though. So yeah. it saves me from having to repeat all my hot takes. But yeah. No idea. No idea. We have ghosts in the building. I don't know. Back is sound. So I hope people aren't like, you know, turning their, their audio way up and then just getting blasted once it co actually comes back on. Uh, Technical difficulties. No, I'm not a school principal. Never had a job in that field. <laughs> it's like it's like the Google moderators like muting our sound. Uh, yeah, it could be. Jeez, I don't know. I could have pushed the button. Maybe I don't know. We don't even know where the button is. I, I, the yeah, I don't even know where it's located. So. I'm like, is there a mute button? There has to be a mute button. I just don't see it. <sighs> I 
You've got a few zoanthids in your tank, don't you? Um, yeah, I have a couple randoms. I mean, I, I, I'm not a big fan of zoas, to be honest. I mean, I do got some names like Utter K. I, it means nothing to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can care less if they're there or not. People gave them to me, and they're just there. So they grow out nice. They grow out. If you're low, just let me know. <laughs> so. Well, Utter Chaos is, is definitely like one of like the higher like big budget, big budgets one to, to get if you're going to get any growing. If if you look, they're just sitting in the tank as if they're a dollar a piece in my system. <laughs> Because like I, I remember like seeing some, but I but literally it was just like some eagle eyes or something like that kind of. Like I, I don't even. Uh, it could be eagle. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, like I, people give me things sometimes. Uh, um, um, you know, here you give me a little piece of this, I'll give you this. You know, mm -hmm. or whatever. And I'm, I, I I don't keep up with that. I don't keep up with the names of them. I, I, I could have. I mean, I even actually got a bounce mushroom. I don't even think you've seen that. Mm -mm, I didn't yeah, see somebody it. gave me that. Oh, nice. Yeah, just, I mean, it's, it's about, you know, yay big, but okay. It's about, it, it's a mushroom. So I, I don't get into those stuff, so, but yeah. Maybe I'll just grow those out for you and see how they do. I, I don't know if they're going to grow fast, though, because I, I don't mushrooms? No, just any of it. Like the Zoas, I mean, they grow, but not on a rate of. They would in a dirtier tank you know mm. it's really that balance and i i don't think people really understand how how hard it is to just you know it's one thing to have just an sps tank mm -hmm. it's another thing to have softies sps lps all in the same system yeah that's a, <laughs> uh, well i mean especially with acros specifically because, exactly like, what acros like is so different than what everything else is that's, gonna like exactly so it's really a balancing act but What age did both of you start keeping fish, and what were your first fish? Oh, well, I was a kid when I had my first gold yeah, I was fish. Yeah, like eight, eight years like old. Like a beta fish or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had goldfish. Like, yeah, I had goldfish, a beta. Five years old or something. See, when I, growing up, I wasn't allowed to have cats or dogs, and I was allowed to have fish. So that's kind of like how yeah, this we all had started. A, we always had a dog growing up. I wish I had a dog. Yeah, we always had a dog. Rico thinks soft corals are for scrubs. I would never say that, DC. You know better than that. No, I I, 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 I try not to stereotype um, anything like that. I do think that when, this is just my personal, or just me personally saying, this is just how I personally feel, should I say. Um, when you are keeping things that I'm keeping, like Dan has, you know, talked about, you know, just having a ton of acros and, and stuff that is real, a lot harder for a lot of people to do. Um, when you can do that and you're keeping stuff, and, like to me, I, I'm bored. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm to the point when it comes to reef keeping that it's, okay, what can I do? You know, now I just implemented Miracle Mud into mm -hmm. my system just to see if I'm going to get some something some different results. So, I was glad that you actually shot my system prior before uh Miracle Mud went in so you mm. can come back out in 6 months or a year or so and let me see cuz I'm going to know the difference. Or I'm going to actually see the difference should I say. This system's been running one way the whole time. So, only thing I'm diff doing different now is adding slowly over the course of the next 8 months 80 pounds of Miracle Mud. It's so it's, it's funny that you mentioned that. And this is something that I would kind of recommend to people that are newer in the hobby, is to document your tank like with you know photography, like take mm -hmm. pictures of stuff, take video of stuff, because we're actually really terrible at remembering things, like really, really, really bad. We're, this like you know, the human form is a very bad data recording device, and so oftentimes we think we remember what stuff is, but when you see an actual video of it. It's completely different, and you, yeah. you kind of can, can can go back and say, "Whoa, that looked way better two years ago than it currently does." I thought we were doing fine. Mm -mm. I thought I was making gains this whole time, but it, it's it's not it's not the no, case. No, I'm actually really excited that you were able to come and capture my system the way it is right now with that camera and 
let's go in six months or, you know, or in a year and see, because I'm not doing anything different, but just adding miracle mud and the trace elements from them themselves, like the vitamins and minerals, the core food and the uh, enhancement for fish. Mm -hmm. the, the, there are three bottles. So that's the only thing I'm doing. Um, but I'm to the point that I, I need more challenge or a bigger system. Um, obviously, we talked about the tanks, you know, finding a, somebody, you know, like Savvy Reef or uh, Savvy Tank or something. Or Reef or, Savvy. Or Reef Savvy, should I say, mm -hmm. um, to build a tank. Um, but it costs money. It's it's a lot. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just a tank. It's not free it's yet. Up, it's, exactly. It's, you know, upping. I, I will definitely go bigger on a protein skimmer. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot. There's going to be more lights added, uh, you know. I am definitely going bigger on the filtration. So, I mean, it's not just one thing, more more rock, like I said. Um, but I just to the point that what I take for granted, most people don't. Like to me, it's just like, okay, it's it's acros. It's, it's I'm not challenged anymore. I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't know if how you feel about the greenhouse when it comes to I think there's always core. room for there, there's room in, for improvement for us. That's for sure. Like things do well here, but well, maybe, again, maybe always if I, room. Maybe if if it was a personal tank, then you know. But yeah, for here, definitely more room to grow. Mm -hmm. And I'm just feeling like maybe there's something else that I can add that I'm maybe Miracle Mud will make me change my mind of well, I'll always run a system with it. Maybe mm -hmm. there's something in there. I haven't seen because I've never used it before. I Not know, a lot of people have. You know, um, I know like Mike Paletta mm -hmm. has been using it for like 20 years or eight, you know, what, yeah, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And he swears by it. So I want to see what, what he's seeing. So that's where I'm at. Now I'm at the point where I'm not so much worried about keeping acros or anything because it's easy mm -hmm. for me. Um, I'm more wanting to get into tinkering. Mm -hmm. and trying to tweak things and show the good, the bad, the eye. I'm not really wanting to kill my tank. Um, I just really want to see if I'm going to get, I don't know what I'm looking for. It's one of those things. It's just, just, try it out. just trying out stuff. You know, so I, I tried out Aquaforce and it turned out really poorly for me. I, yeah, I, I, what, what, what do you think the difference between Aquaforce or, um, Dosing pump or calcium reactor. What do you what do you think the really difference is besides supposedly purity um, of a product? Well, no, Aquaforce is like basically like a form of ultra low nutrient. So the the three, or am I getting that mixed you, up with um, Triton? Maybe may, maybe it's different because uh, it, it, it's it's different in the sense that you're doing like the probiotic stuff. Okay, and then you're getting like yeah. this ultra low nutrient stuff going on. And you get like these really crazy pastelly looking um, Acropora. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not doing it. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. I, I feel like you're starving out the coral to get. Uh, you're, 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 you're literally you're, doing that. Yeah, you're starving yeah. the coral to get this <clears throat> enhanced photoshopped color. I'm good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to put the coral through you that know, stress. Through that stress. Why? So it, it's funny because like uh, the last three different tanks that we've, we've kind of shot here. So it's your tank. Mm -hmm. Another guy's name's Will, and he's doing 100% uh, aqua forest. Mm -hmm. And then there's another guy that's named Nathan, and he has a very different methodology because he does do water change. He has a continuous water change system, in fact, right. in addition to some other things. And so it's, it's very interesting to see like your three tanks all look fantastic, mm -hmm. but are kept completely different from one another. You know, they, they all have acros. They, yeah. They're all getting like, you know, excellent color. Uh, you know, different lighting, you know, varieties, but just completely different philosophies behind it. Right. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, I want to go back and shoot their tanks and then do like kind of a comparison video. Not not be like, oh, this is like some kind of competition, but it's like no. taking a look at just how uh, how you guys have approached, you know, this whole thing so, so differently. <laughs> and, and with my own experience, like a lot of the stuff that like you do in the past hasn't worked for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff that, you know, I tried obviously with, with Aquaforce didn't work for me. Right. Wills did. And so it's, it's kind of interesting and it might be just informative for, for people that, that, you know, want to try new things to show that it can be done in different ways. But, you mm -hmm. know, you have to 
to look at, you know, where are the similarities and maybe where, why do certain things work the way they do and don't work in other places? Well, it could be, it could be more overwhelming, but, you know, just like uh, you mentioned, like uh, the whole water change thing. Mm -hmm. I, I think we all have been on at some point starting out in the hobby, believe that you have to have, you have to do water changes to be, to, you know, to be successful. Mm -hmm. When, depending on the system, I feel like, you know, like my system, the way I run it, if I was to do water changes, my corals look like crap hmm. for whatever reason, but leaving it alone. And I don't know if, because I'm literally removing aminos or some kind of other elements that's mm -hmm. in there that's being I, I i have no idea you know as far as nutrient levels or and then replenishing it with something that's just major or minor trace elements mm -hmm. the corals don't like it and it took me a minute to realize that don't doing not doing water changes why do i need to if first off i'm using some 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 sort of, whether it's a dosing pump or calcium reactor that's putting back major or minor trace element, and I'm adding amino acids to the system. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of ever doing a water change because you're putting it in? Why do you need to keep wasting your money on salt? Mm -hmm. what, is, what, is, what is the salt? I mean, the salt never goes anywhere. At the end of the day, when you're doing a water change, all you're doing is replacing trace elements. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're using a calcium reactor and you're actually dosing some forms of amino acids and stuff like that, or not rinsing your food, because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I don't rinse food. Why yeah. do I rinse food? I'm, I'm, I pay this good money to turn around and rinse my frozen, rinse the things that the corals need mm -hmm. down the drain. Like, no, that, that, that nice milky substance is very good for the corals versus, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't see the, the real reason to do a water change, I, I feel like you disrupt the system when you're doing water changes. I, I see, I, I know people do it and they do it faithful and people think that they see good. Mm -hmm. I would love to see people that do this all the time, all the time, totally stop. Use a casting reactor, use whatever, mm -hmm. put those elements in manually and see how your system does. I almost guarantee you more people are gonna see better results than they would just Interesting. Keep, Keep doing water changes. That's just me personally. That's how, I mean, I've got the years of, of doing this yeah. and I'm not gonna say my way is the right way, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, well, you've been there. I'm not gonna do water change. I'll see you in another five years if I just keep that tag and then you guys tell me then, you know? Yeah, and <laughs> and uh, I think it, it's also like a, a situation of like your mileage may vary, right? So, I mean, we've, we've done systems in, in the past with very, very little water change and it wasn't as good, you know. And, and 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 when something goes like really, really, really bad here, the fix has always been do a lot of water change, right? But I think filtration plays a big part, though, too. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah think, a, a lot sure. of live rock, a lot, you know. A lot of live I, I rock. Mean, that, that's that's another big thing. Like we don't have nearly the amount of live rock that I would like because we need the room for coral and stuff, and that that plays yeah, a huge yeah, difference. Because that, and I really believe that too. It, it's. Yeah huge difference right mm -hmm. now uh, when you're talking about uh, not doing water changes and just replacing like like uh, elements mm -hmm. that's uh, that's kind of very much on, in the line of um, like Triton method so yeah. like, so their, their thing is just to do like very rigorous testing um, and basically dosing exactly what is low and missing and no water changes yeah no water changes just testing uh, strontium iodine potassium calcium alkalinity which you know, my alkalinity, that's, I don't know if you do it, but after all these years, I just go off of alkalinity. If the alkalinity is off, I, I guarantee everything else is somewhat off or, or a little wacko. So, but that, that, our alkalinity starts off off. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you're probably not dosing prior to doing the water changes, making sure that it's matching what's actually in the system. Our, 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 our water chemistry leads it's, a lot. To do. It's, it's not exactly the model of like, the rock solid perfection. Uh, Tattoo crazy ink studio. Thin shaking his head yes, but he's thinking I'm not stopping my water changes. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> I like this idea of having a guest on these live shows. Yeah, it, it, it helps pass the time too. Otherwise, you're just going to listen to me drone on. 
what I've I've seemed to realize that uh, even with these live streams slash live sell shows, um, people like to hear different approaches sure. and people's thought. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's always good to maybe yeah. note well, to self have somebody here. Yeah, because like because yeah. last time uh, like Will was here. Or, yeah, and and in and again, it's like Will is doing Aqua Forest, mm-hmm. and I'm like Will. I killed a third of my coral, <laughs> dude. <laughs> And he's like, it's fine for me, and, and it is. <laughs> it is, and, and you know, you, you gotta. I, I don't think people really realize, you know, the, I, there's so much that plays a part. You know, you got well, how much live rock you have in the system versus him? The, uh, what's your bio load versus his? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think people really take in consideration that you can't compare unless you're pretty much Doing apples for exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's like you're in a greenhouse, like. So somebody mows their lawn and kicks up some kind of chemicals Pollen up in the or air. Some, or yeah, a, uh, insecticide or something mm-hmm. like uh, yeah. Go straight into your tank. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> Most people don't. Right? right. Yeah. Or just like the fluctuation of like you know six degrees a day. Most people don't have to deal with that. Right. Like these things. These things matter. Yeah, they do matter. Matter them more than uh, what people think. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> So, okay, we were just talking about uh, Triton Method. So uh-huh. are, you, are you familiar with it? Um, I, I feel like a calcium reactor is Triton. What, what I'm doing is Triton. I think... I think uh, only difference philosophically, is... Philosophically, yes. The only difference is... is this is technique. The, 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 the technique, Yeah. Pretty for the most part. You know, um, every day I'm not going to dose two milliliters of this and three milliliters of it, 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 yeah. Why? First off, a casting reactor, I, I, I know people are probably tired of hearing about it, but a casting reactor is never changing. It's, it is very rock solid, it, it's, isn't it? It's, it's, it's rock solid across the board. I'll see you in a year when I need to change out my tank or top off the, you know. It, it's, it's one a piece of equipment that's more stable than anything in your whole system, let me just and, say. And here's the thing. <laughs> it, it, it was even stable with like my bad needle valves and fluctuating it, bubble counts and it, stuff like that. If you just look at it every single day, make sure the bubble counter is right, your tank I, chemistry uh, wise is probably going to be just fine. Um, and we need to get back into that. And maybe like an, another big difference is my calcium reactors aren't exactly well maintained right now. And you know, a large part of that is just getting that back up and running. Mm-hmm. These snack corals. They're Isarius uh, snake polyps. Very weird. I think I got a couple of those in my tank. Yeah, sometimes they're hitchhikers oca- yeah. and occasionally. They died back and then they came back. Mm. They, they Are they have, soft? Aren't they like a soft? soft, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and at night they have a, like a tabastria of black heads usually. During the yeah, during the day, mine's is like white and it's all green, but the t- the head's white. Oh, interesting. I, so I I assume it's the same, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, tattoo crazing studio. Do calcium reactors ever get clogged? Yes. Yes, um, they do. For me, has never. But I don't drip. I have a steady flow. Mm-hmm. I I'm not dripping anything. Um, and second of all, I don't think I'm to the point where I can really actually drip my corals are, are are sucking as fast as it. i mean it's pretty much wide open my effluent line mm-hmm. at 6.3 and it stays at 8.6 mm-hmm. and it used to be at 8.9 i mean 9.0 so wow, not so slight ph problem but <laughs> just for dosing all the co2 <laughs> do you have like a have an issue um in like the winter time with low ph no I mean, my, I don't have high pH. My, my pH, uh, since I set this system, uh, is always ran. First off, it is in a basement. Air exchange is not that good. It ain't right. going to be That's like out here. Me. Yeah. Um, there's a window with the you know, protein skimmer, but I got that hose going out uh-huh. and sucking in air that okay. way. So um, that pretty much stays like that, even in the winter. What is it? Orange short, probably. Huh. Got yeah, that me. almost huh? looks like a Monty. Yeah, that does it. It are could that, it, is that, that a, could be a Ganypora. Are you so, Yeah? Could be. Hmm. It looks like a Monty. It does. <laughs> ben, you think that's a Gani? It's hard to tell. That's what we got it as, but 
Yeah, that's, that's, that's what we paid for, perhaps. Uh, I, I, that one, I that you have to see it in person. Well, I would probably get the polyps to close up, but I, I, I want to say that's a Monty. Yeah. But I could be wrong. I think, I think I'm actually on the, on the Ghani train. There's, a lot, the Ghani? There's, a, there's a lot of weird wow. Ghani aura. There's a lot of weird ones like that now. I don't know where they all just showed up from, but there's a lot of them that are like that. Uh, what kind of frag plugs are they? DIY? Uh, no, we buy... Well, they might be DIY, but they... Um, you order Ocean we, we, Wonder? Yeah, they're Ocean Wonders. Yeah, that's what I use. Yeah, these are ceramic. So this is a Ghani. Yeah. Sure. The short polyp ones, I, I'll, I'll have to point out a few of them. They're yeah, that's what's confused. That was what was confusing me. I this mean, is like a regular Ghani. But there are so many. That's what makes it almost like, okay, yeah. maybe it's not a Monty, but... Because there's a, I forget what, what the other, like, Sinocineella or something. There's, that, that also looks like a, a Montipora. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, for example, when it gets it, that is a Ghaniopora. Yeah. It's it's a weird yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but a lot of weird ones out there. Yeah, but <laughs> even though it's kind of whatever, that looks like a Ghani. Yeah, not definitely yeah. not a Monty. Yeah, the other one looks <laughs> weird. The other one's like plating on the plug, mm -hmm. like a Monty. Yeah, and, and the size of the polyps too. Yeah, like see, this one's this one's a closed up version of the previous one. I think that's been one of the best shows I've seen. Most info still. <laughs> the foreign and, and coral still going fast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that's that's Ben. Ben Ben's trying. To <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, keep it moving. Yeah, keep it moving. See, I, I need to have like a director that just does this, right? Where that just like controls all the all, all the overlays and stuff like that, where I could just like focus on the conversation and not have to like deal with yeah, this. Right. Well, what's going to happen is the audio is going to cut out, and then the person behind this computer is going to be like, "I don't know." It's like, yeah. Don't panic. Don't <laughs> panic. This is every this is every day we do these live shows. Something stupid happens. So who knows. Uh, the, uh, we go. The tritus remover is an important part of what useful water change. I don't. I don't remove. He doesn't do water change. I don't do. Uh, and I don't remove detritus. I know people are going to be like, "What?" Here's like the thing. That. I'm not removing it for the simple fact is poo's brain break broken down. No matter what, getting released back. And I'm using poo fish poo as food. That's the way I look at it. Um, it's getting broken down, going back through the water column, and as it goes through and goes back to the protein skimmer, protein skimmer skims it out. I actually, if I sell enough corals, I take a five gallon bucket, top it off with um, new salt water, right? Because I gotta put back my water. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want my salinity changing. Um, I would take that bucket and just swoosh into, into that area and kick all that detritus back into my main display people think it's crazy but the polyp extensions that i get doing it the corals say ah oh, thank you so, and i know it's crazy method i know people are like dude you're nuts well yeah, look at my nuts. tank and that's all <laughs> i can say it's like it, isn't that the, the funny thing is that's like the the scoreboard thing right it's like look at the scoreboard yeah, that's, right? i mean like, look at the tank <laughs> the tank speaks for itself it, it speaks for itself so I'm not a big fan of moving detritus. I even will stare the sand and create a slurry where it's gr gray. Hey, you know, it could be sulfur. I don't know. I doubt it because it's not black. But and you, you, yeah, you know. yeah, I would know. My cook. Yeah. <laughs> I would smell it as well. But no, I, I create. I, you know, I stir up the sand in spots that I normally can't get, and I know detritus builds up. Mm -hmm. Same thing. The corals. Oh my God! You would think it's nighttime, and I mean, and during the day, will ex extend like no tomorrow, and they're just feeding. They're just feeding. They, they're loving it. The polyp, I mean, tentacles are out. Everything, I, everything's open up. The mouth of the scolies, everything is open up, consuming all of this. Hmm. So, 
I know it's working. I know it's, you know, it's so microscopic too. It, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, Acro's polyp is not going to take in this whole pellet. Right. <laughs> So. Yeah, and I think that like that that coral nutrition on on the, that micro scale is like so elusive, and you know not not just like detritus can help mm -hmm. with it, but um, like just having the, the the quantity of fish there also helps because like you know in in the reefs all of these fish at night tuck into these corals exactly. I, I am really curious, like, if there's a way to to measure I, I, what effect, like, the specifically the stuff that you are adding, like the amino acids and stuff, because a lot of people really like that, and so, and other people don't. And I'm kind of curious as to see, like, what. But do they know why they, they don't? That's the question. Yeah. So when somebody says, "Oh, I don't like it," well, how do you know? Do you know if your corals like it? Why do you like don't like it? Because you added too much and created, you know, hair algae and bryopsis in your system. Yeah, I, I guess that's the question. It's like, <laughs> how would you even go about testing for that? Other than I, I have bryopsis now. Exactly. Like, people don't, just, don't do that. <laughs> well, people go by what the bottle says. Bottle uh -huh. says, hey, for this many gallons. That, well, you shouldn't do that. First off, you should always start really low and work your way up, so you know when to hit that injection button when you start seeing a problem arise. Meaning, mm -hmm. when you start seeing signs of algae that hasn't been in your system and now it's popping up in certain locations, well, and that's the only thing that you did. Well, that's the time to know. Well, stop putting. You know, start mm -hmm. backing off. So that that's actually a really good point. Um, another like really good bit of advice for people that are just kind of getting into the hobby or maybe have done this hobby for a little while but are looking to kind of dabble mm -hmm. change one thing at a time <laughs> don't change like two or three or four things because you're starting to get res different results and different results that you don't like now you don't know what it is you have no idea and it's not just like oh well i changed these three things um, therefore i can just kind of like backtrack and it's like actually no you might have changed a bunch of things because of this combination of three things. Exactly. It's like, what is it, like three factorial or something? So there's like, I don't know, what, I don't know what three factorial is, like 60 something? I don't know. I'm not good at math, guys. It's a stereotype. It's a stereotype. But it's, uh, you want to just do one thing at a time, and that way it's very, very clear what you can now back off of. Exactly. Uh, mind boggle fan on the topic of oh yeah we actually have like folks here asking questions and stuff probably <laughs> actually not that many we didn't yeah. ask too many um, on the topic of not doing water change do you think that the deep sand bed and two part dosing with live rock the New York Stilo method is a viable method as opposed to regular water changes again it's one of those your mileage may vary I mean I, I've brought on three different guests now that that do you know their systems very differently from one another very differently from me I would consider all of us to have some degree of success with this hobby and so you're gonna have to kind of find out what works for you it's not even so much I think that you're gonna you're gonna pick the the best thing that you want like it's like oh I, I want to do the, the zero water change system I want to do the Zeovit system I want to do it's like sometimes these things pick you it's right. like you try these things that didn't work you know, I mean, I've been doing it so long. I mean, at the end of the day, I've done it water change. I've done it. No, no I'm doing no water change. That doesn't mean that I crashed the system. I, I mean, I still had a successful tank. Um, you kind of I think the problem is there's no in this hobby. There's not just a, a, a guideline that uh, just one thing that you to go by. Mm -hmm. There's just so many different ways. There's so many so variables. Many exactly. Because once again, think about it. Not all tanks are the same size. Mm -hmm. They ain't got the same amount of rock, the same bio load. It's all different, and I think that's what gets you different results. I would never say my way is the right way, and it's set in stone, and this is how everybody should, because I know that's a lie. Before I before I'm doing no water changes, I've done water changes. I've you know mm -hmm. a bunch of scenarios, but from what I'm seeing, to me. The corals are better than they ever have, mm -hmm. and I and I feel like um, once you get to that point where you can stop sticking your hand in the tank, which I feel like even on large volume volume water systems, you you're disrupting the system. Mm -hmm. Like you got oils and stuff coming up going into that tank, you're disrupting the system. I, I feel like water changes 
you're disrupting the system because everything's not matching from that fresh water that mm-hmm. what's going parameter wise you know major or minor element wise and i feel like that disrupts the system so what can i do to not disrupt this system mm-hmm. at the beginning when you're first doing you're going to have that's why i feel like the first year is really the rough to end of the two year mark uh, getting a system up and just pretty much to that level where it's sustain it, run it, kind of running itself. Um, but once you get to that level where you can stop putting your hands in so much and leave things alone and you're dosing things that you know that your, your system's utilizing because you can test for alkalinity, you can test for magnesium, calcium, potassium, strong TMI, that maybe you don't want to, but those things are, uh, there are kits for on a hobbyist level to do those things to test for. If you can just implement those things back, I think the I, from what I'm saying, I, I think that's the best way to go. Honestly, you you're disrupting. You, you you got you a cleanup crew, meaning you got your you got your tangs, you got your first line of defense, rasses for anything in there. Um, they're in return going to take care of the corals. They f- form that relationship like a clown in a bubble tip. This is just the way I look at things, and, and it's been great for me, to be honest. I, I've mm-hmm. seen the best results that I ever have in my life of reefing. And it, and the, you get kind of get like the double benefit of if it all does work well, then it's less work. <laughs> I, I, less I don't, actual work. Well, you know, I, I mean, me being a trucker, there's times that I didn't go home for a whole month. Mm-hmm. My wife learned how to have to learn how to test. And you know what I had her test? That the only thing I had her test was alkalinity. She only had one time where my tank ran out on me, where she had to learn how to switch out a CO2 tank. But other than that, that tank ran by itself. When I got home, I couldn't see through the glass. But when I scraped that glass, it was like, wow, on how things look. Nobody's touching it. It mm-hmm. learn, It's learning how to be confined into a glass box, and it's learning how to beast you know what do you want to do what do you want to call it like uh, more self-sustaining more self-sustaining exactly as if it was an ocean so i know it's a lot sorry guys i'm geeking out a little bit <laughs> uh we're on a coral live stream i think that it's a yeah, self-selecting it's crowd that has showed up here i don't think that i don't think anybody gets to to, to get away from the geek label right but uh, I'm not trying to sell anybody to do it my way. I'm just saying from what my eyes see and uh, what other people's eyes see when I do visit and see my system, they're like, holy smacks. Well, I'm, I'm just glad that we live now in a world where um, people's, I guess, views uh, on on how to do the hobby. And it's not even that, it's not even that you're having like specific views on how to do the hobby. It's mm-hmm. You're just kind of like, you know, again, just sharing your sharing, experience right. right sharing your experiences but i mean there was a time when there's a bunch of people with really 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 pointed opinions <laughs> that never have shown their tank like ever oh they're still out there oh i'm sure they're yeah. still out. oh yeah but these days i think that the standard is different it's like you know it's uh like people kind of expect to see csi now whenever they get called into court it's like well where's your csi evidence and, and, <laughs> and, and you know law enforcement is like that's that's a TV show. That's not really. Like, and then yeah. people are like, nope, they're not guilty. You know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, like, and that, that's kind of like what people are kind of like here. It's like, where's your tank, bro? Like, what's, who, why, why are we listening to you? Like, you're saying my tank is gonna die. I, I, this 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 hobby the, it will eat you up alive if you start talking, in any form, of the hobby unless you're showing, your your tank. I feel like though, like there's mm-hmm. so many people out here that will still chew you up and spit you out if you're talking reefing and you have nothing to back up what you're talking about or yeah. show you, you, you need to show that. the work you you have to show the work in this hobby i'm sorry um everybody it doesn't matter if you're from israel japan wherever everybody's from a show me state in this hobby <laughs> what is the show me state is that mississippi missouri uh, no Mis- uh, missouri is misery <laughs> first trucker talk anyway hey we're going to misery (laughs) but uh yeah i don't know uh what did we miss Derek Kadosi, what's the most woke coral 
The what coral? The most woke coral. He's he, he, he's joking. Okay, I, I have no idea because what the woke or it, it, so 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 woke means like uh, I guess like politically enlightened. Um, okay, so it's an online slang. Whoa. You know, you're you're basically seeing behind the curtain, and you're seeing like how you know like the bankers rule the world and stuff like that. Okay, so what's the most woke? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Derek. Uh, I don't uh, know. Bounce mushroom. How about bounce, that? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. The bounce mushroom is the most woke. <laughs> right there now. There you go. <laughs> I like Randy for theoretical science and Julian Sprung for applied science. You guys probably talk about Randy Holmes Farley. Yeah. Yeah. He is a pharmaceutical chemist. Uh, my tank is on my channel. Everybody likes to prom promote their uh, promote their channels. Quick. This is your last opportunity. Okay, so uh, by the way, 239 was the last uh, last coral. I'm just going to toss it onto uh, to Rico's tank here. Or hopefully I did that right. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, Missouri is the show me state. There you go. The most woke coral A can echinata. So, very good. Yeah, I, there it is. A can echinata. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, let me go ahead and remove that label. But before I remove that label, I am going to replace it with the Patreon crowd. So, patreon.com slash title gardens. Uh, thank you guys so much for your donations. Thanks, Phil, Mark, Robert, Steve, Ryan, Dave. Nate, Nancy, Jeff, Samuel, Matthew, Robinson, Mark, Andrews. Uh, Samuel, Matthew, and Mark are, are new. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, do you guys have any last minute questions for, for Rico? Thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Hey, no problem. And such short notice. I was like, you know, I'm having this live show. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if he'd be willing to come on. I was like, just, just check real fast. No, no. Any t I mean, anytime you've. Whatever you want, whatever. If you want me over and want to have me over and whatever, have these talks as a um, a good Ben is. You Ben's know, gone. Yeah, Ben's he's, like I'm out of here. He's gone. <laughs> um, as Ben, you know, goes to these corals and help pass the time. I'm usually pretty free for the most part, but um, yeah, hit me up anytime. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah, it's I mean it's it's especially good just to get obviously like a different perspective than my own. I mean, like you guys, if you've um, if you've been watching this channel enough, you're you're getting you're getting like one person's viewpoint, and there's certainly and I think like he, he said it on his channel, I've said it on my channel. There's so many different pathways to success, mm -hmm. but having uh, the perspective of somebody else that has taken a different pathway to that success is better than me just saying that that pathway exists you know to having because there's always that that little extra bit of knowledge from people that have up applied it and, and have gotten to that to their end point or to their current point which is successful mm -hmm. presumably um, you know just because there, there's there's problems that, that have come along that they've had to, to, to solve and that that little extra bit can be very enlightening for whatever it is that you guys are running. So again, thank you guys so much for attending. Um, we got done in about a little under three hours, so we're doing pretty well these days. Um, everybody enjoy their weekend, and uh, see you guys next time. <laughs>